And welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. Yesterday was a good day for me towards the end. I think I kind of sat around, played some video games. Did I go through? I, I wanted to go through one of my, of my spare bedroom in the house and break that stuff down. I mean, pretty much there's nothing in it anyways, but I want to really get organized and try to put it in the boxes. And I did not do that shit at all. <laughs> and I think I went to sleep last night by like 830. Maybe nine thirty, something like that. I saw I slept eight and a half hours last night. <laughs> that's a that's a normal night of sleep for me. Eight and a half hours, nine hours. You know, talk about four sleep disorders. So I can sleep for a long ass time. And when I wake up, don't feel any different. Don't feel refreshed. I just whatever. But anyways, so hopefully today I tackle something in the house and try to break everything down and really get prepared to move and stuff. Still haven't found the house or a price i still haven't found the house for the price i want per se but uh i trust my gut i trust that overall supreme being i trust uh the, the, my higher self-consciousness i trust spirituality i trust universe wherever thing you want to talk about that's what i trust in that will happen not for the reason for whatever but it will happen in the manner in which i want it to happen whether it is the the most positive or negative thing to happen meaning just because i might feel bad about something does not mean that's not truly what i wanted because what you truly want sometimes you hide from yourself what you truly want sometimes you hide from yourself and that's something that i started to realize as far as searching for a house i think i mentioned before like i walked into a house it was a town home connected town home i lived in those before but i was like i don't want to do that again i'm like i want a little bit something different but when i walked into the house I walked in and I was like, you know what? I felt at home. I was like, this is actually the amount of space I want to have. It's the yard I want to have, what I can keep up and maintain with. As far as going out and mowing the yard and being out in the sun, just my health conditions alone. I shouldn't be trying to do more than what I can, you know, bite off, whatever. And then the neighborhood and the surrounding area is something I'm okay with. And I kind of realized, you know what? I don't give a shit a lot about certain things i learn how to adapt anyways because i don't really have a particular dream home that i want i never had a dream home in the sense of a home my dream place to live in would be a loft <laughs> a loft with a balcony not necessarily upstairs or or you know in a high rise nothing like that i mean if it's just on the first floor level and stuff like that it's fine that's it i just wanted one big space to live in and move about and to kind of go outside and see some stuff. But I like to walk to the park or go to a park and sit out there and, and be away from my home and be in a different area. Obviously, your things uh, things change as far as you having kids. And so I put them into an account. But the neighborhood that I'm talking about moving into, their friends are already there. And stuff. And so that means the bus and stuff is already there and things of that nature. So that works out for them. There's a pool. There's a community place, stuff like that, that works out because I don't want to have my own pool because I don't want to take care of it. I don't want to pay anybody to take care of it. It's not, hell, I can't even fucking swim, guys. Right, right? I can save my life, but I'm not going to be in the fucking pool, Mark Spitz style, Michael Phelps doing laps and shit, bro. I'm not going to be jumping in, flipping in. That's not me. That's not me. Maybe some childhood trauma because I almost drowned when I was a kid. Oh, definitely, but... Once again, I have I've learned how to swim and stuff, and I've been in pools where I wasn't able to touch, and I still manage and stuff like that. But it's not something, you know, I'm too particularly fond of. You know, it's just not my thing. I still go to the beach. I get in the water and stuff like that. But, no, you know, I'm not out here all over the place, bro. This is not me. So, you know, having a pool or something like that, a big yard, yeah, I'm good. I don't even want a big yard. I'm good. <laughs> my son was like, oh, yeah. We have a yard and stuff. And like, so I have a basketball court. He's like, we had that. I'll be out there all, all day, every day. I was like, I'm sure you would. Good for you. You get your house. You do that. Because I'm not putting up with that. I'm not dealing with that. That's not me. <laughs> like, it's just me. Uh, yeah. Plus, I like to go play basketball in the gym. Like, I, <laughs> I go to my gym to work out. The basketball court is there. I like the bat for the fiberglass. The gym floor, the hardwood floor, because that's where you're going to be playing basketball at. So having a hard concrete court and stuff in your backyard, I mean, yeah, it help out and stuff, but guess what? I can move to a neighborhood that has a basketball court just like that too. Because my son, as, as the older he gets, within three years or so, 
I'll be taking him to the gym with me to shoot basketball on the hardwood gym floor. You know, that's part of my paid membership. Hell, my gym has a pool. So if I want to go do laps, I can go do laps in my gym. <laughs> and it's a three, four foot pool, so I can always stand up. But guess what I'm going to do? Not fucking go swim, because that's just not me. And sometimes you have to realize who you are and check yourself and be like, you know what? That's just not who I am, man. This is not who I am. I lived in big homes, five bedroom houses, 22, 23 something square feet, huge homes and stuff, just me and the kids. I, I obviously I got the house not just for me, us three, but uh, me and my ex wife got back together for a time being or whatever, short lived, thank God. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, when she moved out and stuff, it was just I had the kids for a little bit, then she had the kids for a little bit. So when I was in the house by myself, kind of like huh, I didn't go upstairs. Why would I go upstairs? The TV's right here, the refrigerator's right there. There's a toilet to, to shit in right here too. So it's like, why would I go upstairs? And th these are things you have to realize about yourself. And sometimes it just takes experiences because not everybody learns the same, the same way. Sometimes you got to learn things firsthand. But that's something I've just been thinking a lot about lately, and especially as I continue my, my downsizing of, of things and, and keeping more of a minimalistic lifestyle, meaning I only have what the fuck I need because that's just who I am. That's just who I am. And I want to say I raised my kids the same way, but... Obviously, my kids are similar to me. DNA, DNA, life experience. So they, they, they're thinking the same thing. Like, hey, I don't care what shoes I get, bro. God bless. Just wear black shoes. It's easier for you. Then you got to worry about nothing. That's why I wear black shoes. But then I start reselling shoes, and I started fucking buying little shoes of different colors and shit. Cause I always still like shoes, but it's the colors I tend to wear: purple, red, blue, things like that. Still nothing too wild or crazy. Or it does have color, be majority black. But you look at my closet, there's a lot of goddamn black shoes. Look at my kids' closet, a lot of black shoes. It's, they're like, whatever, just give me the black shoes because I don't care what they put on their feet. They just want to have a little bit comfortable and they want to be able to wear the shoe all the time because when you're a kid, you have that favorite pair of shoes. You have that favorite pair of shirt. You have that favorite pair of jeans that you'll wear all the time for whatever fucking reason or reasons. Sometimes we don't think about these things or how much we really care about certain things and Try not to let the outside world influence us or dictate us. But that, I don't know. I don't even know why I said all that. To be honest with you, I just I just went into it. <laughs> I don't think that has anything to do with today's topic. I just went into that shit. <laughs> but man, you can see from the headline. So today's topic is CIA, MK Ultra, uh, Manchurian candidates, their mind controlling program. I know we talked about uh, the Boulder shooting. In Colorado, we talked about the Atlanta spa shootings over in Georgia. And I already kind of touched on it. It seemed like, hey, these people seem kind of odd. Like, this is not really how human beings act. And they all got the same narrative, mental illness, all of that. And they switched up the narrative with the white, uh, the, uh, the boulder shooter not being white. Kind of fucks up everybody, thing, right? <laughs> fucks up mainstream narrative. They don't know what to do, which is perfect because I think it's funny. Because it's like, oh, now what? Now what narrative can you go with? even though it still feels like a psychological operation with some type of suspect that doesn't really know what's going on. And they always got mental illness. Mental illness is always the catch all for all these different things. So I'm going to try to play some YouTube videos. Hopefully they'll play because, uh, fuck. I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest, bro. I was talking about the CIA. <laughs> I'm going to go into their dirt. <laughs> So I'm gonna cross my fingers and hopefully these YouTube clips play. I didn't. I don't even think I picked anything other older than like or longer than six minutes. So, <laughs> God. fuck it, man. Fuck the CIA. I did. We didn't do this shit, bro. This is where our taxpayer dollars go. You should. You have a right to know where the what fucking things you're funding, what government experiments you're funding. And even though this is in the is in the past, decades ago. Like the 1933, and then they didn't come out with a document until 1977, I think. Even though this is a long time ago, keep in mind, what makes you think they stopped that shit? And what makes you think they didn't perfect it? Keep that in mind as we talk about that. All right, so, so let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, man, <laughs> this is funny. I was looking at my, uh, <laughs> so as far as uh, Apple's browser and stuff, what is it? What is Apple browser called? 
Safari. Damn, my mind just went blank. So they had a little privacy report because, you know, Apple was like, oh, we care about your privacy. No, you don't. You're the same ones giving our privacy out to people, to the government. Don't give me that shit. But it says uh, 23 uh, profile, uh, 23 things prevented from tracking or, or from profiling you. 23 different trackers. And I looked it up. It was all just uh, just Yahoo shit. Or not Yahoo, uh, ad shit. Twitter, Google, 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 Amazon. <laughs> Oh, they're tracking me, huh? They want to know what's going on. They want to have an idea of what they can sell me and stuff. So I thought that was interesting to kind of point out. So what, like always, I like to use the mainstream media stuff because nobody, Two nobody's American paying attention. Two have just arrived at Sandoz Laboratories, one of the world's leading pharmaceutical factories. Oh, bro, that freaked me out. I was like, what the fuck is playing? <laughs> I, that really freaked me out, man. I was like, "What? what, what there's something playing on here?" Because it didn't do that before. I don't know. That freaked. That really freaked me out. I was like, "That? that what's what's playing?" Okay. Anyways, I like to use the mainstream articles because the mainstream articles they hide things in plain sight. And I, I told you guys before, I grew up watching the History Channel because I love history. I love just knowing about different knowledge that no one else talks about or definitely the shit they don't teach you in school. My curiosity level is always high. Like, I just have to know. I just have to know. I just have to know. Like, I just got to know. I don't know why, but it just bothers me if I don't know. I'm not saying I got to be an expert or know all the details, but I want to have a good general grasp of the concepts or, or whatever is being talked about or not being talked about, rather. So this is from the History Channel. History Channel is owned by a and &E Networks, who's also owned by, uh, uh, it's a joint venture between some media uh, conglomerate and Disney. So yes, Disney has a hand in this. So Google, not Google, well yeah, Google, Alphabet Inc., YouTube, you can't get mad at me, you can't be talking, want to take down my videos, none of that shit, because I'm using mainstream articles, shit that's out here, been out here forever. I'm just commenting on it, because, you know, mainstream media won't talk about this even though this is so far more interesting and ties into, well, the events of this past week, the current events. So it says the CIA is appalling human experiments with mind control. When I say they're fucking with our minds, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not giving an opinion now. Now I'm not even giving an opinion. This is literal fact. Based on fact, they are fucking with people's minds. But I guess it's an opinion in the sense of current activities. Because remember, this is in the quote-unquote past. <laughs> okay, it says on April 10th. Ooh, that's not creepy at all. all right, right there, man. Imagine if I had did this episode on April 10th. What, man? That shit would freak me out. It says, on April 10, 1953, Alan Dules, the newly appointed director of the CIA, delivered a speech to a gathering of Princeton alumni. So here goes your uh, large institu uh, educational institution in America, Princeton. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind Skull and Bones. Secret Society, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, a little group, a little secret club. Oh, I think it's Princeton and Harvard, I believe, or in Yale, where some of your so-called presidents go to as well. <laughs> I think Obama went there as he talked about all the things is wrong and black people can't overcome and stuff like that. Meanwhile, he went to Yale, right? I think he got a law degree there, right? I guess those, those uh, oppressions uh, apply to him, huh? Uh, it says, though the event was mundane, <laughs> global tensions were running high, the Korean War was coming to an end, and earlier that week, the New York Times had published a startling story asserting that American POWs returning from the country may have been converted by communist brainwashers. Uh, some uh, some GIs, you know, uh, what, is, what is GI? I forget. Government something. I forget. Were confusing... Uh, were confessing to war crimes like carrying out germ warfare against the communists, a charge the U.S. categorically denied. Others were reportedly so brainwashed that they had refused to return to the United States at all. Well, they're talking about brainwashing coming from communists, from communism. 
Understand that. This is coming from communism during the Korean War. Brainwashing. As if that weren't enough, the U.S. was weeks away from secretly <laughs> sponsoring the overthrow of democratically elected leader in Iran. With, huh, overthrowing a democratically elected leader. Overthrowing a democratically elected leader. Once again, when I say they do this shit in other countries and nobody's paying attention to what's going on here in the United States of America, there's a reason why I get international listeners. There's a reason why a lot of people who talk about things like that get international listeners. Because people see things happen in other countries around the world, and then they look to America and say, oh, that can't happen there. And then they're watching in real time like, oh, shit. These motherfuckers is letting it happen into their own country. Have they not been paying attention? Uh, Duels has just become the first civilian director of an agency growing more powerful by a day, and the speech provided an early glimpse into his priorities for the CIA. Blah, 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 blah. So my Soviet Union, brainwashing provisions. Uh, I think I showed that video or a clip of a video from uh, Yuri Bethmanov. He was a, a former KGB member and stuff, and he was supposed to go into India to do brainwashing and stuff like that, and then he had a change of heart, and then he's sitting there telling all the, the brainwashing tools that is done by the KGB, which are communists, uh, socialists. We're talking about the Soviet Union, if I'm not mistaken. Always do your own homework, double check what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Figure out shit on your own. But there's a plan, or there's not a plan, there's strategies and techniques in place to literally brainwash a population. When I say it's not that hard, it's not that hard because the groundwork has already been laid out. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to perfect it. It's already been laid out because they've been doing this for centuries. You don't think governments and, and societies uh, or so-called leaders of societies throughout the modern recorded human history, the past 5,000 years, 5,500 years, something like that, you don't think they learn how to control people, sway people's mind, influence them? Because first it start off with influencing. But if you do it enough time and you have a, a high enough success rate at influencing people, guess what you have now? Control. But that only comes about when people give that up, when they give up their own individuality, when they give up their own ability to have their own individual thoughts. That's when these problems arise. That's how you allow yourself to be open up to influences. Remember, we talk, especially in America, you talk about it as a kid. Peer pressure. How many people succumb to peer pressure? Do you want to see how easy it is to manipulate people? Look how many people succumb to peer pressure. All the things that's going on in mainstream media that they talk about, oh, oh, we got rights for this and these lives matter. Hermaphrodite lives don't matter, but no one talks about that. But anyways, <laughs> that's my movement I'm starting. Hashtag hermaphrodite lives matter. That's the movement I'm starting because I want to see what the fuck people got to say about that. Huh? Nobody's going to talk about these things. Anyways, the whole point is everybody wants to feel a part of something and people don't like it when they don't feel like they're part of the group because human beings are human beings. We're social creatures by nature or by design, whatever case you want to go with. We're social creatures. We want to be around other people. Even in my lifestyle where I tend to be alone, majority of the time, obviously I'm not alone because I live with my two kids, me and my kids. Obviously I'm not alone either. I got my fucking cat, right? I still got friends and family members I talk to, but guess what? I don't want to be isolated out in the middle of the woods nowhere because I don't want to be so far away from everybody, but at the same time, I like watching people. So I want to be around other people because they make me laugh. I like watching people's behaviors and movements because at the end of the day, we're still social creatures. We just all have a certain degree of sociability that some of us can withstand. So all this is propaganda and all of that stuff. Peer pressure. It starts there. It starts there. Then you see what, how much further you can push. Uh, it says, those preside, uh, proceed to describe, quote, unquote, the Soviet brain perversion techniques as effective, <laughs> but apparent and nefarious. He gestured that American POWs returning from Korea, shells of the men they once were, shell shock, uh, parodying the communist propaganda they had heard cycled for weeks on end. So in every war, propaganda, psychological warfare is part of war. We, we, we often pay attention to 
the physical manifestations of war, or the physicality of war, far as you know, gun battles, uh, draw, uh, boppy, uh, oh, so let's get this word out dropping bombs. <laughs> we often think about that hand to hand combat. You don't think about the psychological effect. You don't think about the psychology or the psychological warfare tactics that take place in every single war and every single operation. Any military design operation. Because guess what? Sun Tzu, that's the fucking art of war. I really need to sit down and read that one day or at least, at least listen to the audio version. Then at the same time, my, ugh, I, probably, I already know some of it anyways. So they're worried about this. But at the same time, there he is agreeing that damn, this shit really fucking works, bro. <laughs> you didn't pay attention. Operation Paperclip, we took away the Nazi scientists, people that are involved in horrific war crimes. Don't worry about it, guys. Come over to America. You'll be exonerated. Just help us out. Going to Korea War. Oh man, look at the communist propaganda they're doing. This shit really works. Hey, you know what? Hey, let's see what let's see if we can do this too. Hey, hey, don't worry, guys. Some of y'all come over here. Don't worry about what you did. You work for America now. Let's see what happens. Uh, hypnosis, chemical agents, uh, other things they were using. I just, I'm really just reading this article to kind of set you guys up on the time frame. This is back in the 1950s, bro. It says the idea of brainwashing also provided many Americans with a compelling, almost comforting explanation for communism's swift rise that Soviets used the tools of brainwashing not just on enemy combatants, but on their own people. Why else would so many countries be embracing such an obviously backward ideology? <laughs> right, right, right? Because it sounds good. Like I say, it sounds good. Uh, American freedom of the mind versus Soviet mind control became a divine line as stark as the Iron Curtain. It says three days after his speech decrying Soviet tactics, duels approved the beginning of MK Ultra, <laughs> a top secret CIA program for quote unquote covert use of biological and chemical materials. American values made for good rhetoric, but duels had far grander plan for the agency's Cold War agenda. MK Ultra's mind control experiments generally center around behavior modification via electroshock therapy, hypnosis, polygraphs, radiation, and a variety of drugs, toxins, and chemicals. Also keep that in mind too, because you're talking about drugs, toxins, and chemicals. Guess what's in our goddamn food? Drugs, toxins, and chemicals. BPA, soy. We, there's studies, and I say studies loosely because I, I don't, I don't, let's see. I want to say, have I read a study before? I heard about things stuff, and I read some things. I don't, I can't think of, I can't think of a study off the right of the top of my head that I specifically read. But soy in food, certain things can mess up the chemical imbalance or the hormonal imbalance of, say, I don't know, young men, young boys, to where their testosterone levels are not quite that high. You mess up a, a young male's testosterone level, raise a little more estrogen, and all of a sudden, you know, they start to be a little feminine. And we think that's a natural thing, but not necessarily a natural thing. Chemicals, toxins, drugs, and food, things put into our bodies can affect us. Like I said, I talk about eating organic. I still don't know exactly. You'll never know exactly what's in your food unless you grow that shit yourself. But... My biggest thing when I talk about organic, I'm just talking about the ingredients. That's it. That's what I'm talking about, the ingredients. I'm not talking about the labels on the stickers, the USDA, uh, non-GMO project, none of that stuff. Yes, those are there too. They help out, but I'm looking at the ingredients. I'm comparing the ingredients on one box to the ingredients on another box. Uh, the two products are exactly the same. Look at it. Take toasters or toasters, not toast, toaster pastries, Pop-Tarts. Brand names, which some of you guys probably recognize more. So you can have Pop Tarts brand name, and then you can have Toaster Pastries brand name from like a grocery store, or Aldi, or Publix, or Dollar Gen, or whatever, Walmart. Take those two items. Same thing. Same. The same thing goes with cereal. Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Polar Flakes. Cr uh, corn. Uh, Frosted Flakes. Doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. 
but yet the ingredients differ. And the biggest thing is why do the ingredients differ? Is it just because so it can taste better? Or what if some company, I don't know, does a contract with say some private entity that's in association with the government and because the NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, they can't give out their secret recipe. Coca-Cola, you literally put cocaine in there. Coca-Cola product, man, that's secret formula. How do we know that shit still ain't in there? <laughs> Cause if it's under a certain threshold level, you don't have to report it. And it goes with everything. Everything we consume, we have to take with a grain of salt. <laughs> no pun intended, but still. We have to take these things, you know, it's a little sketchy, man. So as we talk about MK Ultra and the and the methods in which they use to have mind control of people, you have to think about our own food, our own water, our own things that we consume in our body. How we know that some of those chemicals used in those experiments are not in our food? Is that a stretch of imagination? I mean, it's kind of fucked up that they're willing to put people under this type of, uh, of treatment in order to see, in order to run an experiment on mind control, right? So clearly, they're not above fucking with regular people, messing with human beings, whether uh, they have consent or not. And some of these videos I'm going to show you guys will touch on that. So if they're not above that, then that means wh where is the line drawn? And that's what people don't understand when it comes to this, when we're talking about experts in the medical field and science and all these different so-called experts. We don't know where their morality lies. We don't know where their values lies. We don't know where they draw the line and say, yeah, this is something we won't do. We don't know what their ethics are. We're just going off a blind illusion, more or less saying, uh, well, we hope. And really going off of, well, I knew I wouldn't do it, so I don't think they would. Just because you have regular human decency doesn't mean the next person does. And I'm not saying, obviously, don't be distrust. Uh, uh, don't trust anybody and be distrustworthy. Me personally, I, I, I trust nothing. That's just me. That's something I even tell my kid. I'm like, hey, me personally, I trust nothing. You know, you guys figure it out on your own. But I'm just letting you know, I'm skeptical of everybody. Cause <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well, it seems like I fucked up in life. So uh, I need to readjust myself and reassess my uh, my thought process and my uh, and really check my emotions and determine or take the time to really determine, you know, is these people worth trusting to a certain degree? Okay, so it says these experiments relied on a range of test subjects, <laughs> human beings. Look how they phrase this shit, bro. Test subjects, human beings. We're not talking about like the CDC with mannequins, bro. We're not talking about computer simulation models. We're talking about human beings, bro. Why would you say test subjects? These are human beings. Some who freely volunteer. So your college students looking for money. Some who volunteer under corrosion. Uh, people under arrest. People under uh, certain charges and stuff looking to get off. Oh, I shouldn't say get off like that. We're looking to uh, get a reduced sentence or something like that. And some who had obviously no idea they were involved in a sweeping defense research project. Military members. <laughs> they in basic training were lined up like cattle one by one. Here's a shot. Bam. Next person shot. Bam. And when I say one by one, I'm not talking about going behind a curtain. I'm talking about, no, drop your pants where everybody's looking and let me shoot this shit in your ass. That's what happened. That's how I got my shot in my ass. I think it was penicillin. It was like, drop your pants. I'm sitting there thinking, bro, we really just going to, huh? We're just going to drop my uh, my pants and don't bring them all the way down. Well, hell, you told me to drop my pants. What am I supposed to do? I got to make sure I only show my ass cheeks, but not my dick and balls. It doesn't matter anyway. He's going to shove this fucking needle in my asshole. Uh, my asshole in my butt cheek. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the reality of the situation that people don't understand. But don't worry, because all the propaganda messages you see on TV will say, oh, do this cool job, be a hero. Hero, <laughs> they don't tell you you're going to get a shot in your fucking ass cheek in the, middle of <laughs> in the middle of a building with no privacy whatsoever. <laughs> they don't tell you they're going to throw you into a shower with no curtains at all and everybody can see what you're doing and stuff. Just open showers, open bay. <laughs> they don't tell you that shit. <laughs> oh man so 
<laughs> you know, much. military members, that also goes for the dependents as well. They get, they, some of them get some of the same shots as well. They want to do anything as far as having, like my kids, being in childcare on base. That's something that I said before I had to think about. And I had, that dwelled on me at the time. And I was like, fuck. I, I, can't, I put us in this situation. I live with the consequences of it. That's, that's all you can do. Uh, it says for mentally impaired boys at a state school, mentally impaired, uh, excuse me, from mentally impaired boys at a state school, boys, school, state school, government funded school <laughs> to American soldiers, <laughs> to quote unquote sexual psychopaths at a state hospital. Once again, government funded hospital. MK Ultra's programs often pride on the most vulnerable members of society. The CIA consider prisoners especially good subjects. Look, look, look at this. I didn't like again. I didn't even read this stuff yet. Huh? This is based on a whole bunch of different things I've learned over the years, stuff, and I put myself in their shoes. If I was going to run these type of experiments, who would I choose? These are the most obvious, quote unquote, test subjects, bro. I'm sorry. These are the most obvious things to do. If I was going to think like them and act like them in, in the manner in which they be, uh, conduct themselves. So the CIA considered prisoners especially good subjects as they were willing to give consent in exchange for extra recreation time or commuted sentences. Literally, I just said that. I have not read this article. I say it all the time. I don't read, I don't even read, pre-read these articles. I, every now and then I might skim through. If it's something specifically, particularly I'm looking for. But this one, I was like, it goes without question. You already know what the government's going to do. Because if I was them, this is who I would pick and choose. These are your most easily available test subjects. Uh, Whitney Burglar, a boogler, a former organized crime boss, a crime boss, wrote of his experience as an inmate test subject in MKUltra. Uh, quote, eight convicts in a panic and paranoid state, end quote, Burglar said of the 1957 test at the Atlanta penitentiary where he was serving time quote total loss of a ap total loss of appetite hallucinating the room would change shape hours of paranoia and feeling violent we experienced horrible periods of living nightmares and even blood coming out of the walls guys turned to skeletons in front of me I saw a camera change into the head of a dog I felt like I was going insane end quote and that's that's uh LSD which I'm sure they're probably talking about in this article. Yeah, that's the next fucking thing is LSD. It says Bulger claimed he had inject he had been injected with LSD. Lysergic acid diethylamine, or acid, <laughs> had become one of the CIA's key interests for its brain warfare program, as the agency theorized it could be useful in interrogations. You're gonna use it for one thing. Because interrogation, it opens up. So these so-called drugs, these effects, they open up your mind. But it's a difference when you do it yourself. You're prepared. You're going to mentally and emotionally prepare yourself as well as phys physically prepared to make sure you're in a safe environment. You're going to prepare yourself. And, and really, you're supposed to meditate before you even take these type of hallucinant drugs and stuff like that. Especially when you talk about something like a, a DMT. Damn, did I say that right? I think it's DMT. I can't think of the name right now. I think it's DMT. Or whatever. Anyways, when you take one of these hallucinated drugs stuff where that, you know, mind expanding, culture, uh, conscious alternating and stuff, uh, there's a movie called Alter State. That shit is wild, bro. I think me and my parents, we, we watched it when I was younger and stuff. And we was like, this movie's dumb. And at the same time, I think I, I still remember that movie. And as I grew, as I grew older, and especially when I learned about MK Ultra, I was like, oh my God. They're just showing us what LSD does and how it messes people up. They're mind control experiments because it expands your consciousness. But if you're not ready for it, you could be susceptible to influence because you're losing. You're basically losing perception of reality. You don't know what's real. You said blood coming out of the walls. I don't know about you, but blood coming out of the walls sounds like a horror movie, which also makes you wonder: Are these horror movies based on people tripping on acid, bro? <laughs> Especially like the ring, somebody crawling out of the TV. <laughs> I just now thought of that. 
Yeah, that sounds like somebody had a wild, or actually a bad trip. It's like, hey, bro, something just crawled out of the TV. Man, bro, would you took acid? Yeah, man. Ooh, don't do that shit again. Uh, yeah, I got to prepare next time. It says in the late 1940s, the CIA received reports that the Soviet Union had engaged in intensive efforts to produce LSD, and the Soviets had attempted to purchase the world's supply of the chemical. So, the, the stuff going on from the Soviet Union, they're paying attention, and they're like, oh, let's try this stuff. Uh, Operation Midnight Climax, what is this? The CIA's initial experiments with LSD were fairly simple, if shockingly unethical. The agency generally dosed single targets, finding volunteers when they could sometimes slipping the drug into the drinks of fellow CIA employees. Over time, these LSD experiments grew increasingly elaborate. Perhaps the most notorious of these projects was Operation Midnight Climax. And you see there's a picture here of a regular building, like a hospital building or something like that. And you have Central Intelligence Agency sign on the fence. It says the view of the old CIA building. That's all it is. I don't even know if it says where. Oh, it does. Okay, so it says in 1955 on 225 Chestnut Street, San Francisco, the CIA was devoting substantial attention to decorating a bedroom. George White oversaw the interior renovations, not much of a decor. White had a a storied career in the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. When the CIA moved into drug experiments, bringing White on board became a top priority. So, you know, as I'm reading this, it makes me think San Francisco. California, Hollywood. I know it's it obviously a good distance away from each other, but uh, the biggest person I could think of when I think of like MK Ultra mind control and, and and LSD experiments and all this other stuff is uh, well, Marilyn Manson, not Marilyn Manson, Charles Manson. God damn, probably Marilyn Manson too. Now I think about it, Charles Manson though. And that he got all those people involved and stuff like that. I think there was always uh, rumors or talks or theories about how he was working with the government, working with the CIA. It's funny because when was the last time you seen a CIA person, you know, handcuffed, taken away, I don't know, given life in prison, death penalty, anything, anything like that? You hear CIA whistleblowers, but guess what? CIA whistleblowers, they're talking about shit in the past. The CIA doesn't care when you talk about shit in the past. You're talking about shit in the past. They don't care. As long as you don't talk about what they're doing currently right now as this, uh, at this moment. Talk about shit in the past. Talk about things in the past all you want to, bro. Can't catch me now, can you? <laughs> that's what they're talking about, really. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, we did this in the past, but, you know, that was frowned upon. We don't do that anymore. Okay, I, I, Captain. I got what you're saying. Yeah, no, no, no. And if you trust that, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I, I, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Let's see. It says White then hired a Berkeley engineering student to install bugging equipment and a two-way mirror. So this is all set up the home and stuff. Talking about uh, Operation Cl- Midnight Climax. That doesn't sound like some weird orgy fest or some shit too, right? And it goes on and on, man. And it talks about the demise of it and uh Oh, you know, because the program fell apart and all those stuff. So it says, in 1977, Senator Edward Kennedy oversaw congressional hearings investigating the effects of NK Ultra. Congress brought in a roster of ex-CIA employees for questioning, integrating, uh, integrating them about who oversaw all these programs, how participants were identified, and if any of these programs had been continued. The hearings turned over a number of disturbing details, particularly about the 1953 suicide, no, this is a decade later, or two decades later, rather. Two decades later, rather. Why? 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 1953, 1955, and then you're going to have a Senate hearing of the Intelligence Committee or whatever subcommittees, they all got these stupid committees in 1990, uh, 1977. A whole couple generations afterwards, or a generation afterwards, right? Kind of, it's kind of odd, right? A generation as well, basically every 20 years, something like that, on average 20, 25 years, something like that. Let's see, it says, uh, the hearing, yeah, the hearing some of a number of disturbing details, particularly about a 1953 suicide of Dr. Frank Olson 
an army scientist who jumped out of a hotel window several days after unwittingly consuming a drink spiked with LSD. Amid growing criminalization of drug users, and just a few years after President Nixon declared drug abuse as a quote-unquote public enemy number one, the ironies of the U.S. troubling experimentation with drugs appear in sharp relief. And then you had all the drugs in the 60s and 70s, man, they were flooding the streets with this. Because what's the, so when you run an experiment, of course you want to have your own control experiment, but you also want to have your randomized control experiment. Oftentimes you hear this talking about we, we're doing COVID-19 testing or the, the studies in COVID, mass studies and all the other stuff. Your randomized controlled experiments, meaning you kind of control the thing, but a lot of the, and I'm loosely describing this right now, a lot of stuff is a, uh, a lot of different variables is random because you know basically that's what it is that's their best experiment your best experiment is a social experiment where the only thing that you can control is your is the experiment itself meaning that what you're conducting so say i flood the streets of california and la and stuff with a bunch of lsd and i throw out all the different things that's me controlling the experiment because i introduced this one thing but then it's random at the same time because I put my hands off it and just see what the fuck happens. And then I sit down and obviously detail and document all the different uh, actions or different results, whatever you want to call it, all the, really all by different observations. And I take that down, take that note and document it. And you document everything because guess what? You're going to read this shit later, bro. Whether it's you or someone else after you, the government documents everything the government documents everything because they always want to go back and read the shit not just in case oh you know man i can't believe you guys did this or you know or you got a document because you don't get in trouble no because they want to know what they went wrong and how they can do it better it's the only reason that's why you're supposed to study real history and not the history they teach you in school or not supposed to you should rather you should study real history and not just the stuff they teach you in school. Imagine regular kids learning about CIA mind control, uh, MK, MK Ultra mind control experiments in school. Guess what you're going to have? You're going you're gonna to have a whole bunch of kids saying, no, 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 I'm not trusting the government. No, nah, I'll think for myself. You know, I don't, how do I not know you guys? Every child in there would be like, oh shit, I, oh, how do I know you're not doing it right now? I don't trust none of y'all. I'm freaking out. Then you get a whole generation of students thinking for themselves because they know based on previous experiences in history that you can't trust the government because shit like this happens, bro. Shit like this happens. And then you get a, a whole generation of kids who are no longer paying attention to what the mainstream media is saying, what the government is saying. So you're not paying attention to all your 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 uh sexual orientation stuff your racial your, all your identity politics you're not paying attention to that stuff because you're like because now you have not necessarily a complete distrust but now you have more of a more of a like hey i can't think of right word to say we have more of that that you're a little bit more cautious i should say you're a little bit more cautious of the information that you receive because you're questioning the source in in which gave you that information now you're like, you know what? What you said, I can't. I have to question it because where it's coming from. You should be questioning what the government says based on their history. And this is modern history. It goes back to 1953. That's not really that long ago, man. Your grandmother is probably that age. It was probably born before 1953. I think my grandmother, both my grandmothers was born before then. My parents were born in the 60s. So as they're growing up, this shit is going on. But were they taught that in school? Were you taught this in school? Now even more, a bigger question, what about countries around the world? Do they know what the United States government does? And countries around the world knows what the United States government does, but people in America don't know what the United States government does? Guess what that is? Propaganda. Brainwashing. Same concept, just on a different level, just on a different scale. So as we look at like a North Korea or a China and saying, oh, they're being brainwashed. Well, guess what, American citizens? You're being brainwashed. Hey, good for you. Welcome to the party. 
Welcome to the world that we live in. Great job. You guys are paying attention. Awesome. You get a golden sticker. <laughs> I like how they went through all this and then the last couple of paragraphs talks about Congress. But I'm going to read a little bit because it kind of goes into the uh, next web page, a uh, website I want to show you guys. Where I left all. Uh, amid growing criminalization of drug users and... Okay, I read that part. It says, but throughout the hearings, Congress kept hitting roadblocks. Roadblocks? The Congress. Should, should Congress hit roadblocks? It says CIA staffers. And also, too, you can't, you can't throw out national security either. You can't be like, oh, well, this is top security, this is national security because we're talking about something in the past. So, and we're talking about doing experiments on American citizens. I don't know what national security implications that has, but doing, uh, what did I say, doing experiments on American citizens, I don't know about you, kind of fucked up. That's just my personal opinion. That's all I'm saying. Kind of fucked up. So it says CIA staffers claim they quote unquote <laughs> couldn't remember plausible deniability details about many of the human experimentation projects or even the number of people involved. Thus, why they don't do these congressional hearings until decades later, because some people are dead and some people are like, you know what? You can't trust memory. That's why it's hard to try like a rape case or statutory rape case, something like that uh, years later, because people's memories are shady or shaky. It's hard. Everybody has the same detailed memory. Not everybody remember things to say, especially if you're talking about anything with trauma, or especially if people are trying to forget that it was a part of this. So they can't even trust their own memories. You, you only know if you can trust your own memories about things. Uh, yeah, I so said they couldn't remember the details about many of the human experimentation projects or even the number of people involved, even though they document everything. The obvious next step would be to consult the records. But, the, but that presented a small problem. In 1973, amid mounting inquiries, the director of MK Ultra told workers, quote, it would be a good idea if uh, the MK Ultra files were destroyed, end quote. Citing vague concerns about the privacy and embarrassment of participants, the men who crafted the MK Ultra effectively eradicated the paper record for one of the United States' most obviously illegal undertakings, a program born in secrecy would hold on to many of its secrets forever. That's, that's sad, man. And here we have, uh, like I say, always go to the source, go right to government, intelligence.senate.gov. Man, you want to know some fucked up things? Check out these uh, 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 Senate Intelligence Committees. <laughs> I think I use it. I think I use it website when I was talking about their torture program. When I was talking about the movie, The Report, on, on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Oh man, they, they killed me, bro. They killed me, man. This is it's this is so so wrong, man. This is so wrong. This is not just a, a violation of human rights and all this other stuff. It's just it's just really fucked up, bro. This is really messed up, man. So this says uh Project MK Ultra, the CIA's program of research and behavioral modification. Mind control. I don't know why they want to name it certain things like that to to see it, the title itself of the report downplays the severity of what was going on. Human experimentation using drugs sometimes against people's wills to affect their minds. And the whole point or the goal or the goal of all these experiments is mind control. But instead, they're going to label it as research and behavioral modification. That's once again the government using broad generic terms. Not going into specification because they don't want you to know exactly what they're doing. They only want you to know exactly what this report is on. If I read it just as Project MK Ultra, the CIA's program of research and behavioral modification, you would take it as, oh, maybe they're working on some some criminals or serial killer psychopaths trying to make them better people to re put them back into society. See how I just spun that so easily? Guess what? That's military training. <laughs> That's military training. That's me going, telling you something because I've been trained to find a spin like that for public affairs situations. <laughs> and like I said, man, I worked in food service, worked in the fucking gym, like did regular job support stuff in the Air Force, man. But the training is the same for everyone. It doesn't matter. 
doesn't matter, bro. <laughs> it's so easy to spin that way, and you will think nothing of it. Like, okay, yeah, that sounds cool, man. Okay, oh, so, oh, no, don't worry about it. It was helping out, uh, you know, serial killers, stuff like that. You know, that way we can kind of help them with, again, back into society. Now, what if I say they use this type of research project, behavioral modification for, I don't know, pedophiles? And you'll be like, oh, you know, that's actually a good thing. <laughs> but it doesn't go there, bro. It's not there. They're trying to mind control. They're trying to control people's thoughts. Plain and simple. It's also interesting that MK Ultra mind control experiments, guess what? Project Mockingbird is <laughs> the same thing. Putting out stories into the media to influence people's thoughts, it's the same thing. Every government will always do the same thing. Pay attention to history. Doesn't matter. Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, in Egypt, I believe. And uh, it's, uh, of course, everyone thinks about Rome. You can think about Athens and Greece. Like it all happens the same way. Government gets too big, or the the overarching hierarchy, power, the infrastructure, whatever, the monetary infrastructure, power hierarchy, whatever. It doesn't matter. That so-called authority that gets so big to the point where. They are destroying themselves because they destroy the, the population because they're doing too much because all they're trying to do is control people. Is control people because as the government grows, the population grows. It goes hand in hand. You're not going to have a big ass government and a small population. That doesn't make sense. As the population increases, the government will increase. And then the government's next step is to think, well, how do we control these people? Because Guess what? The population is, is getting big, so we got to make sure we learn how to manage everybody so we don't have any issues. So even though this some of the stuff might come out as good intentions, it's not. Or I can't say it's not. It doesn't mean that it will always stay as good intentions. Because power can kind of mess with you, right? Power can, can, can become addicting. Power, uh, power can be a drug. And once again, it's the perception of power, the perception that you have control over, over somebody, the perception that you have influence over somebody. Because in reality, you don't. No one can take over your free will. That's why laws don't mean shit. You, you, know, you never think about it. Laws don't actually mean anything. Because guess what? We still have people that break those laws. So it lets you know laws don't mean nothing. It's just a part of a population. Some of us are going to do some things regardless. And if it hurts someone, some of us don't care about that. The law is not going to stop anything. So we're talking about having an anarchy society. People are always like, oh, yeah, we go around not having any laws. We, everybody's going to go crazy. No, you're not. I think Ron Paul brought it up before. And, and he he wanted, uh, I listened to a lot years ago and stuff on certain things because I was already thinking that anyway. It's like, what happens if he just say no 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 law against drugs people were like oh because everybody will go out and do drugs and he was like no they're not i think he was running for president and he talked about it. it's like no they're not if we if everybody in this room right now was allowed to do cocaine you telling me everybody's going everybody's going to leave this building and i think it was doing a talk or something like that or maybe he was doing a debate he was like you really think everybody's going to leave this building and go out and do cocaine right now he's like no no it doesn't change anything the law doesn't change anything it's on you anyways you're not going to go out and kill someone just because, say, they take away a law saying, oh, they're not gonna, they're going to say murder is allowed. You're going to say, oh, there's no law against murder. It doesn't mean everybody's going to wake up the next day and start killing everybody. No, bro. No. One, know why? One, you're not that type of person. Two, you're going to think twice about it because that means if you do that to someone else, guess what? It can come back on you. That means you always got to look over your shoulder because someone can come kill you for doing something. Cause and effect. Law, universal law of generation. You give, you receive, you receive, you give. What you put out will come back to you. Law of attraction. Oh my God. Oh my God. What's a crazy concept? Stop, Damien. Chill the fuck out. You're making too much sense. There goes my narcissistic pat on the back for the day. And let's continue on. <laughs> so this is from August 3rd, 1973. Uh, joint hearing, blah, 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 all the little stupid stuff they got put on it. They can't move this. All different people that's on the committee. Uh, interesting in that is a Kennedy on it, Edward Kennedy, which is which uh, who goes by Ted Kennedy. 
some of these names. I'm trying to see if I can recognize them off the... Bro, I'm fucking done, bro. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. I did not expect this shit. I did not expect this shit. I did not expect this shit. I did not know this shit. Everything happens for a goddamn reason. You gotta be fucking shitting me. You gotta be shitting me. You gotta be shitting me. Joseph R. Biden fucking Jr. was on a Senate committee for Project MK Ultra. You have got to be fucking with me. You have got to be fucking with me, bro. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh my God. See what happens when you actually sit and read these things, man? I knew about this stuff, and this is the first time I ever sat down and read the document. This is what I'm talking about, bro. Nobody reads this stuff, man. And, the, and let's be honest, some of us don't want to read it, including myself, because you don't know what you're going to find. Now my mind is blown for the day because I done stumbled upon some shit and, oh my God, and now these YouTube videos ain't going to play. Watch, watch the YouTube videos will not play. Even though I already watched them on my phone at my house and at the gym. Watch the YouTube videos not play, man. And I hope I'm wrong because, oh my, oh my God, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Let me bear, let me really read this. It says Senate Select Committee on Intelligence established by uh, S Resolution 494th Congressional Second Session uh, Daniel K. Inouye, I N O U Y E, a Hawaii chairman. Oh my God, is that a minority? In the 1970s? Oh my God, I can't believe there was a minority there. He's probably like a white Hawaiian or something like that, right? Huh. Then it says Barry Goldwater, Arizona Vice Chairman. Uh Birch Baya uh, at Indiana. Adley E. Stevenson out of Illinois. William D. Hathaway out of Maine. Walter D. Huddleston out of Kentucky. Joseph R. Biden Jr. out of Delaware. Robert M. Morgan. Uh, Robert Morgan, excuse me, out of North Carolina. Gary Hart. Colorado, Daniel Patrick Moen, New York, Clifford P. Case, New Jersey, Jake Garn, Utah, Charles uh, Mathias Jr. out of Maryland, uh, out of Maryland, James B. Pearson out of Kansas, John H. Schaff out of Rhode Island, Richard G. Luger out of Indiana, and Malcolm Wallop out of Wyoming. And then you have some other people who are office members, Robert C. Byrd. Robert C. Bird. Why does that sound so familiar? Robert C. Bird. Oh no, I'm thinking Admiral Bird. Admiral Bird, who flew over. Where did he fly over? He flew over to North Pole and he had his own stories about uh hollow earth and stuff. But I think that's a I think that's a different bird. I don't think it's the same bird. <laughs> as I say that in that that name, yeah. See, I just did a Wikipedia search on my phone. His, his name is Cornelius Calvin Sell Jr. He changed his name, so it's not the same. It's not the same person. At least I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. It's not the same person. But that's that's all. Oh my God, I'm still blown. I'm still blown. I can't. I didn't know Biden was on this shit, bro. I definitely don't trust this motherfucker. I definitely don't trust this guy. I I. I <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't trust him now. So yeah, and then some other people on this stuff. And then they're Yeah, so they're on an intelligence committee. They're a select intelligence committee. Then you have Committee on Human Resources, uh subcommittee on health and scientific research. Let's see, let me scan through these names real quick, see if I see some. Edward Kennedy, which is Ted Kennedy. He's on a committee of human resources. Uh Taylor Nelson, William D. Hathaway. Some of these names sound a little familiar, not really though. Uh, yeah, nothing else sticks out to me. Lawrence Horowitz, that name sounds familiar as well. <laughs> Man, then it goes to the contents. Uh, they did psychological assessments. They did quote unquote true drugs and interrogations. That's your LSD. Construction of, of gourmet anonyx, uh, which I guess one of the facilities. Uh, they did drug testing in foreign countries. Uh, MK Search, which I think is after MK Ultra program, MK Search was some different, probably trying to search any other uh, subjects, like they call them. 
if they're out there anywhere. And then, what is it? I wanted to know if they have like a final wrap up of exactly like the overall what they found. And it looks like it just kind of goes into talking about what took taking notes on what happened and stuff. Uh, obviously, do your own research. It's a lot of pages and stuff. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not going to lie. I probably won't even read it all either. It says the committee will be working closely with the president and, and Admiral Turner in placing this new structure under the law and development effective oversight procedures. Uh, so the president will soon announce his decision on how he has decided the intelligence committee so the United States shall be organized. So they're talking about Southern Intelligence Community and stuff like that because of all the different things they're doing. It says, uh, finally, there is an obligation on the part of both the committee and the CIA to make every effort to help those individuals or institutions that may have been harmed by any of these improper or illegal activities. So they always want to throw money at a problem because money will solve everything. If money solved everything, you wouldn't have homeless vets. You understand that? Obviously, you're a disabled vet. They get money and stuff to a certain degree. They get this program stuff to help them with homes and things like that. Guess what, though? It's not about money. <laughs> it's about the mentality. It's about the, psych the psychological issues of it or mental health issues of, of the situation that goes unaddressed and cannot just be worked out through a couple of therapy sessions and stuff like that. Because it's more than just about something going on in their head or something that they've seen. Oftentimes, we're talking about military vets, but we're really talking about, well, the constant brainwashing and stuff like that. And the drugs, the toxins, the chemicals, the stuff they put in vaccines, the stuff they give uh, military members throughout their active duty, our guard, reserves, careers, stuff like that. But mainly we're talking about active duty. Or mainly I'm talking about active duty, rather. Uh, it says at least one death that of Dr. Olson resulted from these activities, uh, the whole LSD and different things they were doing. Imagine, imagine your co-worker as you doing some top secret shit, you're on a project and they slip you LSD in your drink and you freak out and fucking jump off a building and kill yourself. Then again, how we know he actually killed himself. They could have, they could have gave him those drugs just to fuck with him and coerce him into killing himself because he probably was like, you know what? I don't want to do this shit no more. And he probably made, you know, probably raised some concerns. And it was like, you know what? We don't trust this guy. He might snitch on us. Let's kill him. And you and once again, that's a stretch of imagination. These people are injecting people with drugs and stuff and fucking with their heads. So at what point do they draw a line or something? You really think murder is above these type of people who work on these projects who do these things who do these things? You really think murder is something that they're not above doing? You really think that's where they draw a line at? Like, you know what, I'll run all these tests on you and fuck with your mind and all this stuff, but you know, I won't kill you. I won't kill you. I won't even kill you. The CYA cover my own ass, or cover your own ass, <laughs> cover your ass. You you don't think they're above that? It seems like I, I kind of feel like they're not above that shit. Actually, let me take this. Uh, let me take the History Channel page down. I don't know if uh, <laughs> I don't know if Dot Gov is tracking me, but I wouldn't doubt that they are. Let's see, uh, financial disbursement records for the period of 1960-1964 for 76 of the 149 numbered 149 number MK Ultra sub-projects have been recovered from the Office of Finance by CIA and were made available to the Church Committee investigators in August or September of 1975. The 1963 Inspector General report on MK Ultra made available to both the Church Committee and Senator Kennedy's subcommittee mentions electroshock and harassment substances, covert testing on unwitting U.S. citizens, the search for new materials through arrangements with specialists in universities, pharmaceutical houses, hospitals, state and federal institutions, and prior resource organizations. So all your infrastructures in America, you cannot fucking trust. Your, your public and private universities, you cannot trust. So your Harvard, Yale, uh, Stanford, all those people, Princeton, can't trust them, right? Pharmaceutical houses. So your, your Mayor Bunton or whatever you call that makes uh, the aspirin medicine and stuff like that, can't trust those people. Hospitals, private hospitals, government-funded hospitals, mental health hospitals, 
Can't trust those people. State and federal institutions. We already know you can't trust government. And private research organizations. So all your so-called nonprofit organizations. Oh yeah, we're nonprofit. We just do research. Okay. Yeah, can't trust those people either, huh? And why can't you trust them? Because I'm sorry, history dictates history dictates future or dictates present, whatever the, the phrase goes. It doesn't even matter. You wanna know what's going on? Look back in history. You're supposed to learn history so you don't make the same goddamn mistakes. Meanwhile, there's a group of us in the human population that look back at history and say, hey, oh, you know what? They are doing that. They're learning their mistakes. They learn from their mistakes. They're, but they're learning from their mistakes. So, okay, how do we not fuck up and get caught again? Because that's what criminals do. Because those that are going to break the law and those that are going to do things against humanity, doesn't matter. They're going to do it anyways, regardless of the law. You have the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, who usually does things with foreign intelligence. Doesn't matter, they did shit in the United States of America, in San Francisco, California, and different states around the country. Doing illegal activities, literally committing crimes. I don't think no law stopped them. And hell, did you see anybody get go to jail? Did you see anybody go to prison? What happened to these people? What happened to these people, man? And it goes on and on and on. I'm not even, I'm on page 10. And look how much I'm scrolling, bro. For those of you on the audio version, I've been scrolling my ass off. <laughs> and it doesn't matter, man. It's tons and tons of fucking pages of this shit, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me scroll down to the bottom. It says 171 pages, but yet it feels like it's so much, right? Let's see. Uh... Before the human resources, blah, 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 you asked whether the agency employees have been terminated because of their participation in MK Ultra Sub Project 3. Admiral Turner indicated he did not believe any employee had been terminated. This is a letter from the, uh, the director of Center, uh, Central Intelligence, 23rd December 1977. Honorable Daniel K. Inouye, uh, Chairman, Select Committee on Intelligence, blah, blah, blah. This is a letter he wrote out. Cool. Cool. That says, yeah. But we have agency records search on this question. So we don't think nobody got fired over this, but we'll we'll search our records to see if someone did. You tell me nobody knows. Every time something happens with the government, everybody all of a sudden becomes oblivious. Even though when you're in the government, you know you gotta document and remember every fucking thing. Cause once again, CYA cover your own ass. This is what happens. <laughs> So you're going to document anything. If anything, you're going to document it, You're going to say something just so you can be like, you know, it wasn't me. It was this guy. I was just following orders. Following orders is the biggest excuse. And when you're talking about government and military operation, it's the biggest excuse in anything. Oh, uh, it's not my fault. I was just following orders. Even though it's already in the United States Military Code of Justice, the UCM, or United States Code of Military Justice, UCMJ, it's already in there that you're not supposed to follow any orders that seem unlawful that are that might put you or, or others in, in at risk as far as health safety reasons. Really, don't follow no shit. That sounds like a dumb goddamn idea. That goes without question. But see, for an independent thinker, of course that goes without question. But that's not what they want. These institutions, these governments, these corporations, all these different people, they don't want you to have independent thought. They want you to think outside the box. But the box that they want you to think outside of is the one that they created to think outside of that box, which is still a castle within another box. Because really, there is no think outside the box. All there really is, is think for yourself. What would you do? What would you do in this situation? Put yourself in different perspectives. The only thought that matters is your own internal thought. There is no think outside the box. That whole conventional method of thinking and stuff like that, it's because it's been programmed. They're trying to tell us to think that way. And they do it through our public education system. They do it through the TV shows. They do it through the media industry, music industry, commercial ads, all this shit, man. Telling us how to think. And then you say, oh, think outside the box. It was, I, and I say that with frustration because I heard that so much in the military and the Air Force. Oh, you guys got to think how to, you got to learn how to think outside the box. And it's like, no, what? I just, I just thought of something on my own and you didn't like that shit. And it's like, oh, good, good, you know, good for you trying to think outside the box. Like, I'm not thinking, fuck thinking outside the box, bro. 
I'm just telling you what we should be doing based on my experience and what you're not paying attention to. That's it. And then I'm like, oh, Sergeant Jackson, you got any ideas? No, I don't have no ideas. Well, you think I'm going to sit here in my fucking, in this fucking meeting and waste my time about ideas? You don't care about my ideas. You just want to have somebody say something so you can be like, yeah, yeah, we're having some nice conversation. No. That used to kill me. They're like, oh, sorry, Jax, you don't have no ideas? Nope. Well, you never got nothing to say. You goddamn right got nothing to say. Because when I say something, you guys ain't listening. So why am I going to sit here and waste my energy, waste my time for you to shit on my idea? I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and go do what the fuck I want to do anyways. And, now, and, that's how, and that's how I did 12 years of my military career. I'm like, whatever, I'm going to do what I want to do anyways. Because guess what? We're all going to do what we want to do anyways. It's not like I'm sounding like some type of selfish asshole or some type of uh, uh, narcissistic jerk. The truth is, we're all going to do what we want to do regardless of what anyone else says. Always. Always, always, always. Because it's your, it's your choice to make. Because you have to live with the choices you make. And they know this. They know this, so that's why they try to influence you and try to have mind control, got to do drugs, got to do stuff, something that will get you relaxed and give up your, your sense of free will without you even knowing it. Make you more susceptible to the information which they provide to you. So once again, you really think they don't put drugs, toxins, and chemicals in our food to make us more susceptible to their propaganda messages. Really think about that. Do you really believe the United States government, private corporations, all these different entities that they just talked about, all these public institutions, all these things, all these different institutions, all this stuff. You really think at the core that there's not somebody in these organizations that's not above doing something like that? You really think that? That's something you really have to sit and think. Because if you take that kind of, what you want to call a paranoid delusion or uh, some type of paranoid ideology where, uh, you know what? I don't know what's going on. Something doesn't seem right. If you go down that road, it will freak you out a little bit. Because you'll start looking at stuff like, wait a minute. This kind of seems like a setup. You know what? This seems like a setup. Wait, you know, this seems like a setup as well. You know what one of the biggest says is? Cars. I'm kind of going off the subject, but I'm trying to relate this. Cars, automobiles, biggest setup. I try to replace my battery in one of my vehicles. I think it was a, I think it was my Dodge Journey. I had a Dodge Journey. It was 2007, eight, something like that. Anyway, 2010, it doesn't even matter. I had a Dodge Journey, and I want to replace the battery. I want to go look for the battery, could not find the battery. And you're like, wait a minute, what do you mean you can't find the battery? You just look up the hood, it's right there next to the engine. Right, wrong. It was not next to the engine. It was above the front left tire. Why did they put it there? They can say, oh, better design. They can say all this stuff. No. Because you have to take it to a dealer or take it to an auto shop in order to get your battery replaced. And then now what are you doing? Charging a hundred some dollars. Or paying out a hundred some dollars, rather. Or even more, because depending on how much your battery costs, you're paying for that, and then... Depending on the degree of difficulty, guess what? That increases the price of labor costs. Any over overhead charges, fees that you're going to uh, you're going to have to uh, consume. That you're going to have to take that L on, depending on where you take it. More than likely, you're probably going to take it back to the dealership where you got the car from, because those are the same people who already looked at it and worked out on it anyways. But guess what? That also is business. There's no ethics in business, even though they'll tell you that there's an ethics class when you get a business degree. There ain't no ethics in business, bro. I don't, there's no, there's none. You go into a contractual obligation, you're supposed to know what you're going into, as well as the other person agreeing in a contractual obligation or a contractual agreement, rather. What, what, what? Like, this is what it is, man. This is what it is, man. So, the same as them doing mind control, they have their reason for why they want to do it. And it does not necessarily align with you and your own personal safety. That's it, man. That's it. Let's see. I'm going to pull up these YouTube videos and after I shit on the government, let's see if they play this stuff. Uh, they probably won't. They probably won't. But 
<laughs> that's just, fuck me. I hope they do. I hope they do. I hope it doesn't have. I hope it doesn't give me any issues. Let's see. Oh no. I think the first one I want to show. Okay, yeah, the first one I'm gonna show is. Okay, yeah, this is from National Geographic. Right. Yeah, this is from National Geographic. Oh man, I just don't tell me I clicked. Okay, so don't tell me I clicked on the wrong button. So this is from National Geographic uh, YouTube page. This is a CIA mind control, CIA secret experiments. This was uploaded March 6, 2008. 2008. When I say I've been looking at this stuff for a decade, that's why. Because a lot of this shit was put up on YouTube back in like two th when YouTube was on. What's even more disturbing? There's only 1.7 million views, approximately. 1.7 million views. Meanwhile, a video of a cat will have like 5 million views. That lets you know what the population actually cares about. But a lot of this stuff, people don't really want to think about. And I get it. Because it hits you at your core, it affects you, and I understand that. But at some point in your life, you're going to be complaining about something about the government and be bothered by something, and you're going to be bothered by corporations, you're going to be bothered by stuff. Guess what? That's on you. That's on me. Because our ignorance. Because ignorance is bliss. Because we don't want to take the time to really pay attention and think about what's going on. That's on all of us. That's on all of us. But don't worry. Eventually, you'll have no choice but to pay attention. Because guess what? COVID changed all that shit. Because when they did that, everybody started paying attention. Because everybody was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's going on now? Are we really doing all this? That's when everybody started paying attention last year. See, yeah. <laughs> it can kind of backfire. But, you know, let's see, how, let's see how it turns out in the future. But you have a video, of, like, from Blackpink that will go to, like, a billion views within 24 hours. I mean, hell, a couple days, whatever. But then, CIA mind control gets 1.7 million views over the course or over the over the course of over 10 years. I said that wrong, but whatever. Okay. In the wake of World War II, the U.S. government is engaged in a large number of secret medical experiments designed yeah. to help win. The you, you know, right, right off the bat, right off the bat. You can recognize this information because History Channel was talking about after the Korean War, right? 1953. This is talking about in the wake of World War II. But I guess, let's see, let's see. Let, maybe we'll start talking about the Korean War as well. War. Developing techniques for mind control to create a so-called Manchurian candidate. Manchurian candidate. What is the extent of these brainwashing experiments? So they went with the whole brainwashing to create a Manchurian candidate, Manchurian candidate, someone that you can control or whatever, stuff like that. Uh, secret agent, a uh, killer, uh, like the movie, which was a remake with uh, Denzel Washington from like 2004 or something like that, where the Manchurian candidate was someone that was a presidential, uh, I think it was a senator's son or something like that. I can't remember where they were going to use that person to assassinate someone so it's all types of things you can assassinate someone you can put them in political office just your puppet that you can control like an obama how did the cia become involved in such far-reaching and disturbing research but that's what they do <laughs> in may 1953 scientists at porton down are researching one of the most lethal nerve agents known to man lsd sarin oh sarin that's right the experiments are conducted on military volunteers, <laughs> but the young servicemen have no idea what they are letting themselves in for. Fuck no. On the board, there was a separate notice typed, which said in so many words. So this is the uh, audio version of podcast. This is Ken Earl, senior aircraftsman from Royal Air Force. Your British Air Force. Wanted to help find a cure for the common cold. By volunteering. Ken Earl becomes an unsuspecting wait, 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 what? Did he say common cold? By volunteering, Ken Earl becomes an unsuspecting... No, no, let me go further back. ...said in so many words, 
Volunteers wanted to help find a cure for the common cold. So the volunteers. So By the volunteers. So the volunteers flat out was like, oh, these they, these these people have good intentions. Because we're going into an experiment that's going to help with the common cold. To find a cure for the common cold. Man, I wonder where those people are at now. I bet you those, those are the same people like, uh-uh-uh, don't take that vaccine. <laughs> Ken Earl becomes an unsuspecting guinea pig. In they the did war against the Soviet. <laughs> Think about it, bro. <laughs> Think about it. That's why the COVID nineteen vaccines is a trial. It's an experiment. Experiment. That's why it's under emergency use only. It's, it has no real FDA approval. It's just emergency use authorization. It's an experiment. Like I say, two weeks to roll. You want to do it? Do it. What it gives me is that they're not really telling people that it is an experiment. So people are literally going and willingly going to experiment. Well, not willingly. Literally going to experiment unknowingly because they're thinking, hey, we're going to get this vaccination from this disease. The same tactic, once again, pay attention to history because they use the same tactics over and over. They just perfected it a little bit because and perfection just means a slight, a slight little tweak in which the way you uh, propose the situation. They did it where they thought they were going to uh, they were going to try for a cure for a common cold. Now, COVID-19 vaccination stuff, because, you know, told everybody they can't go outside. They got everybody worried and stuff, whatever. It's like, oh, you can get what? Quote, unquote, back to normal. Back to normal or have the new normal if you take this vaccine. See, they're enticing you through your own human decency that you have good intentions, that you're a decent person. But the standards that you have for yourself is not the same standards everyone else around you has. And that's where we get into a lot of issues, especially if you're talking about in America over the past year and around the world. I mean, think about it. Regular people, just, regular people have the common courtesy towards each other. Regular people have human decency. But they all keep telling us, oh, there's somebody, these people hate you for this, or these people hate you for that. No, no, no. The people that don't give a fuck about you are sitting in Washington, D.C. They're the ones that don't give a fuck about you. The CEOs, these top executives of these huge corporations, they're the ones that don't give a fuck about you. And it's naive to think that they do give a fuck about you. Because the person that's in your family, that's in your social circle, they probably don't give a fuck about you. Yet they'll sit in front of your face and pretend that they do. And this is not to say that all this is bad and people are horrible. It's just to let you know the reality, this is the human species. So all that kumbaya shit, let's all hold hands, connect together, and all live in some harmonious society, it's a delusion. We're just not there yet as a species. And that's just me being a, objectively honest about the current situation that we live in. Some people don't like each other. Not just for one reason, for multiple reasons. So when you're talking about doing a vaccine, when you're talking about doing uh, things, trying to go in and help out for a study, just because you have good intentions does not mean the people conducting the study. And I say the people, I'm not talking about the nurse or the doctor or stuff like that, that they are doing their jobs or, or who, who want to believe the same thing. I'm talking about the original architects of this whole thing. So it goes to your presidents for Trump. Doesn't matter. It goes to anybody. It goes to these corporations, uh, Moderna, uh, not Monoso, so that's GMOs, uh, Azteca, I can't think of the other one, uh, Pfizer, it goes to them. Does everyone involved actually have good intentions? And that's something that you cannot really computate. Like, how can you actually know? That's why you can only make choices based on yourself, based on your own opinion, based on your own objective research. That's it. That's it. Because you don't know who you can fucking trust, bro. <laughs> Excuse me, CIA, government, Washington, D.C., excuse me if I got, I don't know, some issues when you're talking about doing certain things. Because I look in the past and you have no problem jabbing somebody with some shit and saying that you're trying to find the cure for the common cold. <laughs> On May 4th at Porton Down, he and five other Air Force men are led into a small. And there it goes. And there it goes. <laughs> like clockwork, this shit ain't gonna work no more. <laughs>
I can't believe that. I can't believe it, but it's it's just <laughs> just stop, bro. Just stop playing the audio, man. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna work with it. I'm gonna run some. I'm gonna ins hopefully just end some processes. Uh, got some junk files. Six point five eight megabytes. That shouldn't be an issue. I clear up some processes on the CPU, and maybe maybe that might work a little bit. The RAM is running over 58%. All right, now it's dropped down to 40%. So let's see if this works. <laughs> Goddamn fucking government. Up the left sleeve. Okay. These two men then took two pieces of material and they taped them to our forearm. Yeah. They put they a cloth around. They each a respirator and that we were not under any circumstances to take off the respirator. Uh, so it's your regular mask that and you see in those everywhere. was sealed behind us. <laughs> so you're locked in, you're trapped now, it motherfucker. Very, very pokey, a small building. And I found out since it was a gas chamber, which... Uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, that was like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a gas chamber that I went into, so they locked the door. <laughs> this technician, with a vial, and a pipette went round each of us and he dripped onto this piece of material 20 drops in two rows it's like i'm assuming the LSD. clear liquid is sarin nerve agent oh, that's sarin my fault he is talking about it's quickly absorbed into the arm through the skin the effects are immediate i became absolutely claustrophobic so I they so what. they they could so they didn't even inject it bro they put it on their fucking arm and it went through the, the material and into their skin. Think about that. Sarin gas. Liquid going through the skin and affecting your nerve system. Affecting the chemicals in your brain, your neurological pathways, affecting all that stuff. That make you have hallucinations. Just a couple drops, man. A couple drops. Imagine. Imagine. They put that shit in some food, right? Imagine they put that in, I don't know, a couple vaccines. Would you notice the difference? Notice every time you get a vaccine shot, you always feel sick afterwards, and they say, oh, this is just the side effects? <laughs> yeah, terror there is in being trapped and not being able to breathe properly. You feel you can't breathe. I was sweating profusely. <laughs> yeah. And I now, even today, I have nightmares about it. Yeah. After half an hour, we were released, gasping and spluttering and sweating. I guess he's, open air. he's giving his own Pure personal account. May morning. Absolute bliss. What a wonderful thing to be alive. Sounds kind of staged to me the personally, but whatever. The corresponding paperwork clearly states the purpose of the experiment is to determine the lethal dose of sarin. After the Korean... The lethal dose? The, the, uh, what experiment do you need to have, bro? Because if you're using it, the goal is just to fuck up your, your opponent, your enemy, especially when we're talking about war here. Which is, I think these things are kind of, there's even uh, rules of engagement when we talk about war, Geneva Convention. Like, there's some things you really can't, you try to, war is one thing, because we're talking about resources, economy, land, and stuff like that. You don't necessarily want to completely wipe out an entire population of people. You know, the United States government dropped a bomb on two cities. They dropped, they dropped it not just once, but twice. Because the destruction they saw the first time, they were still like, yeah, you know what, let's drop another one. Doesn't seem like anybody cares about humanity, though, right? Huh. Or disturbing new intelligence reaches Washington. Hundreds of American troops are still being held captive, subjected to brainwashing experiments, and then killed. Mind control research back <laughs> home intensifies. Yeah. The new goal is to cause an individual to become subservient to an imposed control. So they got to a picture the of a man just sitting there. Acts against his they're, will. They're just poking his face. Have no memory of the act. Oh, I'm gonna play that back again. I'm gonna play that back again. Listen to what he said. Will, and then have no perform acts against the his will. The new goal is to cause an individual to become subservient, subservient. to imposed control. Imposed to control. The point where he will perform acts against his will. Acts against his will. To perform acts against his will. Almost like someone going into a building, a grocery store, and killing everybody, and coming out with no shirt on no pants on look like some long ass boxer drawers 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 why what 
I didn't say that word. But anyways, acts against his will, something that they would not normally do. All these so-called masters, what they always say, oh, yeah, it felt like a video game. I wasn't really clear what's going on. Oh, don't worry, they have mental illness. I'm sorry, does that sound like MK Ultra type stuff? Does that you tell me that doesn't sound like this? You tell me that's really far fetched. That's really a stretch of imagination. Remember, when I'm talking about it, it's supposed to be classified, or the mainstream media will say that, oh, that's just conspiracy theory. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See what I'm talking about? How 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 distracting and how like insulting that phrase is? Conspiracy theory? No, ain't no conspiracy theory. Literally, the CIA conspiracy theory. The CIA is one bad conspiracy theory. They conspire, they theorize, and they conspire to commit crimes. And the crimes that they are committing are crimes against humanity. Fucking with people's lives. Fucking with people's health. Fucking with people's minds. CIA government are the huge, biggest, the most bigger conspiracy theorists. Meanwhile, they take that word and apply it to someone like myself. Because I don't know, I sat here and listened to what the fuck they were saying and doing. And say, hey, that sounds like what's going on right now with this guy when he talks in his debriefing. And what is it? The Atlantis Paul shooter. He was like, oh, yeah. Uh, what I think he said, uh, yeah, oh, I just had a sex addiction. So I have a sex addiction, so I'm going to go kill the people that I'm having sex with. And no one's going to talk about what's going on with this so-called illegal prostitution ring. No one's going to talk about that. And he, does that even sound like a plausible thing to do? I have a sex addiction, so let me go, I don't know, kill some people because they're uh, contributing to my sex, addi uh, sex ad addiction. How about you just cut off your source? I, I don't know. You, there's not other ways to go about that? Does that all that seem plausible? Or does it sound like, yeah, somebody's fucking this man's mind? Also, the person was in a uh, mental health hospital, I believe. Guess what? Same thing applies with the Boulder shooter. They all got mental health issues. They all like, oh, we don't really know what the motives are and all this other stuff and things like that. I don't know about you, but if I go to commit a crime, my goal is not to get caught. So I'm going to go in and have an escape plan. I don't know if Netflix still has it, but go watch that movie Rampage. Because if someone's really going to go out and do these killings and stuff, and it might seem senseless to you. Really, you just don't know they have a plan. And they will try their best to get away. Because if anything, they're going to want to do it again or something, anything. I don't know what serial killers go and do all these killings and try to get caught. They always try to escape. They always got some plan. In fact, the thrill of them is the fact that it's hard to catch them, right? They get off on that. Yet, a mass shooter just goes crazy and has some mental health issues and he buys a gun and now we want to have gun control. Meanwhile, we ain't paying attention to, I don't know, what happened with this dude's mental health. Was it uh, actual natural mental health? Was it organic? Or was somebody pushing buttons behind the scenes? Influencing them. And have no memory of the act. No memory. The search for a real life- Flip a switch. In candidate begins. To produce such an assassin, the CIA faces two main challenges. An assassin. How to induce amnesia and how to program in new behavior. <laughs> As they strap someone to a bed and in stuff. In 1957, Dr. Ewan Cameron, an eminent psychiatrist in Montreal, believes he has the answers. Cameron applies his techniques Electro -shock under the guise therapy. of normal therapy. It was a three-part technique which started with an effort to wipe out past patterns of behavior. So this is in the and 50s. this was accomplished through the use of particularly intensive, repeated, high-level electroshocks until no more convulsions could be elicited. When you're talking about electroshock, you're talking about fucking with someone's brain waves. Everyone has a distinct, unique brain pattern, same as you have your distinct DNA, fingerprints, stuff like that. Uh, retina scans in the eye, or the iris. You have, you have your own uniqueness to you. So they can affect your brain waves in a certain manner. Guess what? They kind of affect the way your brain operates. Kind of affect your thoughts. Cameron then plays tape recorded messages through helmets that are locked to his patients' heads. <laughs> this psychic <laughs> driving 
forces them to listen to repetitive statements for weeks on end to program in new behavior. You know, the final phase was to try to wipe out all recollection of what had happened. And yeah. that was accomplished by putting people to sleep for 30, 40 days, accompanied by different kinds of cocktails of drugs. So understand, they know how to wipe people's memories. They know how to implant false memories. So that whole Mandela effect saying, oh, you know, you just got a false memory. No, no, people, they can easily implant false memories into people and stuff, man. The Mandela effect, we talked about before, it's something to do with quantum, well, stuff that's on the quantum rail, the realm. But you can literally affect people's memories. Once again, how do we not know they're putting this in our food and stuff, putting this in our water supply, putting this in the things that we do and eat? Now that's not drink and eat, rather. That's the end of that video. That that struggle to play. <laughs> That struggle to play, so let's let's see. Uh, no, that's I'm not. This is not what I'm playing. Back. I just literally pressed back. I did not try to go to this page. What the fuck? Oh my god, it pissed me off. There we go. Now I'm all over the place for no reason. My my, <laughs> it's all over the place. Now, as it talks about Manchurian candidates and, and, and stuff like that, I'm trying to relate it to the day. And when I say I'm trying to, I'm going to show you. This is a video from CBS. CBS News correspondent. Which I'm sure I'm going to get a copyright claim for. Why was his gun returned? God damn, man. What the I know I'm going to get a copyright claim for. But it is what it is. So like I said, this is from CBS News. This is from January 8, 2017. Uh, this, is at a, this is about a shooter, a mass shooting in Fort Lauderdale. And the suspect was Esteban Santiago. I don't even think I even remember this. But it says, the, floor, the title of the video says, Fort Lauderdale shooter thought the government was using mind control. When you're talking about hiding in plain sight. Now watch, they'll probably ridicule this shooter or whatever, stuff like that. But... The fact that the shooter said, thought the government was using mind control. You, you, that doesn't make you think, uh, what if this guy is telling the truth? At best, you take it at face value and try to make sure you, you get rid of that, uh, that possibility. You know, you, you cross that off. Like, okay, we did our research. We, we collected evidence stuff. That seems like that doesn't pan out. I like how 114, one, this is only viewed 71,000, uh, has 71,000 views. And I like how 114 people downvoted it. <laughs> and I, I, it's a funny thing. One of the comments says, uh, this is from the ether. He said, uh, this person said, I simply typed in MK Ultra, and this is the first thing that came up. Hmm. And it's funny because that's exactly what I did too. I typed in MK Ultra, <laughs> and this video pops up. What, because it goes along with government mind control and stuff? You're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Sure it does. Sure it does. But see, that's why I say you can't, uh, when you're talking about race or sexual orientation and all these identity politics and stuff, they always, I don't like it because they use that as an excuse because we're not getting to the core of the problem because that's a distraction. That's a distraction, man. Because I hear this stuff, all I hear is MKUltra. People that, for no real reason, go off and kill people, oh, because they hate someone? There's people that you don't like right now. That's somebody that you probably hate, that you would kill. But are you really going to fuck up your day, fuck up your life, go out your way just to kill that person? You kind of just sit there and destroy your life away, right? It makes no sense. It's not even plausible. It's not, it has no real self-interest for you to go out and do those things because you put your own life at risk. And if you care about yourself, you're not going to want to do that. Well, oh, I guess these people are suicidal anyways. They don't care about their lives, so they want to take someone else out with them. See, once again, all these excuses, excuses. These are not real explanations. These are not. These do not really get at the core problem of the issue. 
Let's see what they say. correspondent David Begno is at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. David, why was his gun returned right after yeah. he was admitted for mental health issues? And how likely is this the same weapon used in the Fort Lauderdale? Right. Stacking people with mental health issues have well, guns. They had no like myself. To keep it. I mean, the federal authority said yesterday at the press conference, we can't just keep a gun from a man who has been released from the mental facility. So they did the checks that they thought were right at the time. Yeah. He had every legal right to have the weapon. Yeah. And so the FBI was saying we had no choice but to give it back to him as whether it was the weapon used <laughs> here at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. The FBI said, quote, there is suspicion that that is the case. We don't know if they mean they suspect it or other people suspect it, but they acknowledge there is suspicion, but there suspicion. is no confirmation that it was, in fact, the weapon used here. Well, David, as you know, police have detailed a criminal history of violence with Santiago. What do we know? Pay attention how to sell the narrative well, right now. He had, he had a tumultuous year in 2016. Let's put it that way. See, Starting here's a narrative. January, he was arrested for criminal mischief. Then in March, he was accused of trying to strangle someone, but there was no probable cause to make an arrest. Okay. And then in November, Elaine, he went into that federal facility in Anchorage, which, by the way, is very routine. A lot of people will go to an FBI office with a tip a, for information. He went to the FBI he with a tip. Saying people were trying to control his mind. The FBI said he was having terroristic thoughts, but. That's right there. You see, they try to set up the narrative. And their whole narrative trying to sell is that he's crazy, mental health issues, stuff. But see, that's dis this is whole disinformation right in front of you. Disinformation. Discrediting someone's claim. MK Ultra is a real thing. This guy's talking about it. And he's saying, hey, the government is fucking with my mind. He went into a federal building to say the government is fucking with my mind. And what did they do? Said that he's having terroristic thoughts. Terroristic thoughts? I just told you the government is fucking with me, and you're going to tell me I have terroristic thoughts? This doesn't seem odd to anybody? found interesting is that he shows up in the vehicle. He also left his weapon in the vehicle, took the loaded magazine with him into the office. But he took a loaded magazine to the to office, the FBI. They said to the FBI. Said he didn't threaten to harm anyone, not the child, not anyone else. So they thought, you know what, let's just get this guy some help. Let's give him so some that's help. That's why they forced him to go see when i hear let let's just give him some help what i hear is hey let's go back to this re-education training let's go back and and tweak this a little bit because you're clearly not ready to do what we want you to do because that was in november of 2016 just by based on what this news anchor this reporter just said that happened in november 2016 going of uh, this shooter going into or not shooter excuse me uh santiago going into FBI building in Anchorage and saying he's under mind control. And they say, hey, let's go get this guy some help at a mental health institution. We just watched the video. And we just read the documents of saying this is where they go. And even on the History Channel saying this is where this is where they conduct these experiments at and who they did it on. People at mental health institutions, people at state funded hospitals. They sent that guy there. Guess what? He got his programming, did his little tweaks right. Two months later, sent, it back, sent his ass back off to go complete the mission he was supposed to complete anyways. Reprogrammed him, retuned him, send him back on his way. A mental evaluation. Well, David, in Puerto Rico, the accused uh, brother is speaking out and blaming uh, the authorities, specifically the FBI, for not helping. We blame uh, the FBI for when not helping. Came to them for help. How is the mother reacting to this? Uh, Pay attention to the family Elaine, through tears yesterday, speaking in Spanish to journalists in Puerto Rico. The family always seemed blame off the US too. government for not giving her son enough treatment. But she said that he was, as another family member said, essentially out of his mind. He was exactly. having issues that the family knew about. Always and crazy. And other it's, family members I told you when I say it's the same narrative all the time. It's always somebody close to him, some family member say, you know, he was acting kind of weird. He's kind of off and stuff. He's a little crazy, a little paranoid. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, this is how they set it up, man. This is how they set it up. Even though this could be applied to anybody, you could apply this type of narrative to me. And that's the whole point. It's a broad narrative. It can be applied to anyone at any given time. It doesn't have to show a huge history either. They just said they just went back one year prior to the shooting in 2017. They just went past his past year. If the government's fucking with him, somebody's fucking with his head, what do you think is gonna happen? Things are slowly gonna escalate until he explodes. But guess what? That's done by design. If I was going to have 
someone conduct these killings for me so I could push my pop, uh, my propaganda, my political agendas, whatever. This is how I would do it because it's so goddamn brilliant. And you can't tie anybody to it because the mainstream media is already paid off anyways. Because if they were going to do real investigative reporting, his ass wouldn't be standing there in fucking Fort Lauderdale. He would be at the FBI, uh, at the FBI office in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's reality of it bro they're gonna do some real reporting they always want to be on the scene be on the scene bro no you need to go and start doing some digging because it's not about that it's not about the truth it's not about information once again operation mockingbird the cia already got into the government it, uh the cia government already got into the media especially mainstream media because that's what it is anyways that's what it got into already so it doesn't matter doesn't matter. Now you have social media, YouTube, regular people like myself who's been looking into this shit for a long ass time who had enough and like, fuck this, man. We're going to talk. We're going to speak out. We're going to speak out because we see it happening and it's driving us crazy. I shouldn't even say it that way. It's making us frustrated that no one else is talking about this, even though, once again, it's so blaringly obvious or blaring. Uh, yeah, so blaringly obvious right now. It's screaming out. It's right in front of our face. But once again, it's all conspiracy theories. It's all crazy talk. There were periods. I'm just a crazy guy from Santiago. So there would be a phone call at one point during the year of 2016. Tell the narrative that he's a loader, a loner. We don't talk it to family friends. That in the federal document, Santiago allegedly confessed to planning the attack. I don't know. They're going to mention it right now. And it's somebody that he confessed to planning the attack. But for those on the, of uh, those of you on the audio version of the podcast. They are literally showing Santiago in his army uniform, full gear on, military vet. Once again, MK Ultra, mind control program. They conducted experiments on people with mental, uh, people at mental health institutions, hospitals, public schools, military members, their own CIA employees. You really think that shit stopped back then? You really think it stopped in 1953? You really think it stopped after their little Senate Intelligence Committee hearing in Congress in 1997? Or excuse me, 1977? You really think it stopped? Why would they? Why would you stop? Why would you stop when you haven't perfected your method and you haven't tested out the way you really wanted to? What about a, I don't know, a Jack Ruby, a Lee Harvey Oswald? Was those experiments not going on around the same time that Kennedy died? What about all your patsies, right? Your, the people that do these. So now it's not necessarily assassination. It's all about bombings, mass shootings, right? And it's the same thing all the time. Even when you switch up the narrative of the skin color, it's the same thing all the time. Mental health. Somebody all of a sudden seemed a little off, or whatever. Family members like, yeah, we kind of noticed things were going on, and and that way everybody could find someone to blame. Oh, well, how come the family didn't say nothing, or how come the FBI didn't do nothing? How you see where all the blame is scattered all around the place? Distractions, distractions, because nobody knows about MK Ultra. If you if the mainstream media really talked about MK Ultra. If MK Ultra was really talked about, these government programs was really talked about, these crimes against humanity, shit like this would be a no-brainer for people. Because when I hear stuff, that's what I say, when I hear these mass shootings, this is what I hear of, or this is what I think of, rather. MK Ultra. So I was like, hey, I'm recognizing the patterns, the same thing over and over. And you see, all you gotta do is slip a couple sarin gas. You don't think they perfected the right amount of dose? Because they're trying to find the right amount of dose of sarin gas, which would be lethal, Guess what? You're also trying to find the least amount that you can put in that will have some type of side effect, something that will lead to something else. So we get a nice little cocktail mixture. You can kind of slip into someone's food, drink, vaccine, whatever. And now they're susceptible to your propaganda, to your manipulation. Because guess what? That takes years to perfect, years of experimentation, a lot of trial and error. Don't worry. 
they clearly got it right. As of tonight, he is in federal custody at the jail here in Broward County. Once again, charged with one count of why they always take him in. More counts, but I always say they take him in custody people. because you got to evaluate your experiments. You got to debrief them. You got to run the final test. So you can come to your conclusion. And then you kind of figure out, okay, was my hypothesis successful or not? Least to keep him in jail and he is expected to appear before a federal magistrate tomorrow. But David, any word on a motive here? You see, the mainstream media only shows the white people most of the time, so, but all these other mass shooters, they just kind of go on. And I, I had to remind myself, because I was saying the other day, I caught, had, look, caught myself slipping. I'm like, oh, you know, you always go with white people and stuff and narrative and stuff like that. They, that's what they, they usually go. But that's usually the ones that get the most publicity for a longer period of time. Stuff like this happens too, and it kind of goes under the radar. It gets a little bit of publicity. Obviously, it's on CBS News. Well, it's on CBS News, not necessarily CBS. <laughs> no, and look. Okay. There we go. I don't want to uh, overstate this, but the FBI has said twice at every press conference we have not ruled out terrorism. That is not to say we have not ruled out terrorism. Terroristic involvement. But we just need to tell you that at every press conference, the feds usually start. George Pirro, the special agent charge here in yeah, Miami, not ruled out has terrorism. started every briefing. There have only been two that I have been at where he has said we have not ruled out terrorism. Other than that, where else have I heard that? no motive that has been given at this point, Elaine, other than to say they believe Santiago came here to Fort Lauderdale for nothing else than to commit the mass shooting. He only had a one way flight. Uh, let me ask you, you David, see how they simplify the narrative. Sa uh, you see how they simplify the motive. He came here for one thing to have a mass shooting. Murder is the only charge right now. One count of murder. But you can bet more will follow. All right. David Begno in four. They do the same time. The same thing every time. Oh, you know what? His motive is just to cause terror. He's just a terrorist. He's just a domestic terrorist. He just hates people. That's it. That's why he did it. That's what he's about. That's all he cares about. That's 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 his motive. And to me, like I said, it's kind of, it's not good enough, bro. It's, it's not good enough. It's kind of, it's kind of shady. It's kind of shady motive. Let's see. Uh, I'm already pushing the two hour mark. So was, there was a thing from the history channel I want to show you guys, but it kind of touches on that too from the article that I read. It's just that they uploaded this three years ago, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. And they're, they're really they're talking about the, the war on drugs, but this, I want to show you guys this last thing is a clip from RT America. This RT America is something I used to follow and watch a lot because. When it comes to turning your balls, always. Oh my gosh, shut up. So <laughs> it usually comes from a. I just try to. I was just trying to hear things from uh, a perspective from the media outside of government. That was my whole main thing. Trying to hear a different perspective. Not to say that I trust Russia today, a state run media either, but. You just need a different perspective sometimes, especially when you know your own country lies so much. A group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army. And for context, this is talking about a CIA Manchurian candidate. So MKUltra goes into Manchurian candidates. And this video is from December 1st, 2010. Look, 41,000 views. And in the description, it says uh, a group of military veterans, once again, you know, somebody like, I don't know, Santiago in California are suing the CIA over allegedly implanting remote control devices in their brains. They allege the, uh, the spy agency was on a quest to turn humans into robot-like assassins via electrodes planted in their brains. Notice how I was saying allegedly, even though the Senate committee it did an intelligence, uh, did an intelligence report and did a whole subcommittee and everything on it. So we know it exists to what distinct details. That's the problem. We don't know because they don't sat here and fucking deleted everything, but it's still there. Well, the concept of it all, the, the, the idea behind it. They didn't really dismiss it anyways. It's still there. Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland, where scientists tested hundreds of chemical and biological substances on at least 7,800 servicemen. 
So could this really be happening? Well, joining me to help discuss this is Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. Dr. Ross, tell me, is this really happening? Did the government really take part in mind control experiments on soldiers? What kind of stories have you heard from the survivors of these experiments? I know you've had access to thousands of documents from the CIA. Well, it's just like you just said, there's two kind yeah. of streams of information. Isn't that there's new? stories from survivors, and then there's the documents. So if I go to the documents first, they're very, very detailed, 15,000 pages. And this uh, is uh, Dr. Colin A. Ross, Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. So he started on a little plus, institute. And we're starting back in 1950 with projects called Artichoke and Bluebird, which were then rolled over into MK Ultra. Which in turn was rolled. Pay attention to how he said how he's telling the history. It goes from one thing to another thing to another thing. All they do is say, "Oh yeah, we stopped it," but they don't ever actually. All they say is, "Yeah, we stopped that," but the whole concept they don't actually stop. They just develop a different thing and go into a different project and a different project, but it's still based all around the same concept. For the MK search. And then all the documents stop in 1973. So in that era, 50 to 73, uh, there's a whole host of different types of mind control experiments. Hypnosis, <laughs> LSD, special interrogation chambers. There's some of the stuff we already talked about. Implants. And so there's projects uh, in the CIA documents and in Army records where electrodes are put into uh, dolphins. And the dolphins are directed <laughs> by remote transmitter. Dolphins, bro? Bomb. To a target and there's a discussion of uh, similar technology in cats and other animals oh my god there's uh, did that research with funded by the office of naval research published in mainstream journals where electrodes are put in the brains of cats dogs and their behaviors controlled <clears throat> and even human beings at uh, harvard and yale Harvard and Yale. So, this is absolutely documented fact. Harvard so and Yale. tell me how commonplace this was. Is this, are we talking about one program that took place decades ago? Or do you think it's happening more often than that? And if so, how could it be so secretive? I mean, most people would think this can't be true. This is a stuff, this is stuff out of a movie. No, the, the movie right. is taking stuff uh, from reality. It was not just one program and back. I, and you know what, just throw this in there. When I talk about movies and TV shows, it's right in front of your face. Stranger Things. What do you think that is? What do you think Stranger Things is? It's not necessarily mind control, but it's experimentations on kids. When we say kids are being lost and abducted and nobody can find them, we're talking about human trafficking or kids, stuff like that. What do you think? What do you think that's for? What do you think that's about? What do you think that's about? When she tried to go find her real mother with L, try to go find her real mother, stuff like that, and, and realize what happened. That she gave away all the other stuff for money, for experimentation. Where do you think that's from? This, and that's not even Project MK Ultra. That's actually Montauk Project. That's something we got to talk about sometime, too. He's 67. He said it was Harvard, uh, Yale, Tulane, UCLA. So we know there was more than one university involved, more than one branch of the military, more than one program, for a fact. All those kids. What's going on currently, of course, is all classified. People of course. tell you stories about it, but I can't actually prove that it's happening today. I'm certain that it is, but I can't prove it. Okay, so did these people know what was happening to them? I mean, uh, in a lot of the articles I've read, it seemed like they kind of volunteered to be part of some sort of experiment, right? <laughs> Volunteer my ass. Yeah, and a lot of the different experiments, like there was a group of children in a school for the mentally retarded in New England. Their parents were told that the children were participating in a study of a dietary supplement but actually plutonium was being added to their cereal the dietary so supplement types of different Plut experiments plutonium added to the cereal when i say they can add that shit into food and you wouldn't know it exactly that or no real consent was given but think about it bro what type of person would put plutonium in cereal and give it to a child didn't really know what was going on people and are sick man they were basically tricked and I think in the brain electrode experiments, it's kind of a combination of both. Some patients were told you have an electrodes put in your brain, but it's for some therapy purpose when it was really research. Others were told, go, go here and volunteer, and you don't really have much choice. Being tricked. 
you know what happens? The same, the same mentality. I gotta pause stuff too because goddamn copyright and shit. But it's the same thing that happens, man. When we're talking about human trafficking, when we're talking about slavery and stuff like that, we're border crisis situation. People are being tricked and lied into these things, lying, psychological warfare. The fact that they're gonna take you, the regular person, your own human decency, flip that shit on you, and do some fucked up thing to you, because you would think that they will have the same human decency and consideration about yourself. But it's not always the case. And that's sad to say, but that's the reality of the situation. That's the understanding, or that's the objective fact of the reality of the human species. We're all not really nice to each other. Sorry to break it to you. More exact story. So what exactly would the government do when they would control someone's mind? What could they make someone do when they manipulated their I don't brain? know. How about a mass shooting? That might happen. Well, what it describes in the documents and in the published papers is uh, there's actually photographs of a 16-year-old girl. She's got a series of electrodes in her brain. Sex slave. Depending on which button's being pushed on the transmitter, she's either strumming her guitar, pounding furiously on the wall, or staring off into space. <laughs> you know what? As he said, strum on, strumming on her guitar, I'm not going to lie to you. Fucking Taylor Swift popped into my head. Her song, Teardrops on My Guitar. Because, <laughs> man, cause think about this. Because as I've been talking about MK Ultra and mind control and assassination, uh, mass shooters, the same type of uh, mind control, the same type of techniques can be applied to anyone. Take your mainstream celebrities, your, your, ta well, your Taylor Swift, your Cardi B's. How about, I don't know. Take uh, Eminem or uh, Demi Lovato. Take uh, those people that all of a sudden will say certain things for the longest, and then they also have drug addiction issues, substance abuse issues, correct? Next thing you know, they kind of have a near overdose or damn near overdose, almost die. They go away for a little bit, come back. Next thing you know, they're clean and stuff, and they, they, they're singing to a different tune and they're acting different, and everybody's applause for their success story, even though America likes to see people destroyed anyway, so I don't know why we sit here and want to have a round of applause when someone has success. That's not us anyway, so I don't know why we're like that. But the thing is, how do you not know somebody's going, I don't know, sent away to a re-education camp, mind control, whatever flip some drugs in them, fuck with their heads, and now you got them to do what you want them to do. Who are you, Eminem, to try to sit here and make a song calling out the Illuminati in 2004, calling out George Bush, calling out John Kerry and stuff, talking about all these senators and presidents and stuff like that? Who are you talking about making a song called Public Enemy Number One or Public Enemy thing that... <laughs> thinking I might die soon. There's someone in the van. Somebody listens to my phone calls. You're freaking out. Next thing you know... You have a near-death experience of a, a drug overdose. You go away for a little while, you come back, and all of a sudden you're not afraid, and you turn over a new leaf, and you're an alcohol anonymous, uh, alcohol anonymous, anonymous, and you're you're not worried about anything anymore. You don't think mind control can apply to celebrities? I mean, the shit started out in California when they're doing the projects in MK Ultra in San Francisco, and California, and stuff like that. So, you don't think they'll go walk down the street? I, 40, 50 miles, however far San Francisco and Hollywood are apart. Go down there and see, hey, hey, let me slip this into uh, Sharon Tate's stuff. Or Sharon Stone, wherever one of the name was that was with Charles Manson. Let me go ahead and slip this in and let's see what happens. Hey, we don't like the message that you're presenting right now. And one of these like Disney Channel stars, whatever. We don't like the message that you're presenting. Or, hey, you want to reach this level? It's not necessarily always about going into a cult and doing different things. Don't worry, they have methods to make you do the shit that they want you to make you do. <laughs> With the animals, they're actually directed to walk or swim to a target. So you can control... <laughs> um, hey, they're not controlling my cat, bro. ...physical motion and the mental state. They gotta fight me. They're not controlling how my cat. How detailed and how fine-tuned that's gotten since 1970. Again, I don't know because it's all classified. And this is from 2010. This is from 2010. Can this happen? I mean, how fast can someone's mind be taken over? Does it happen over a period of weeks or days? Well, the, the electrodes is a little different because you just put the electrode in 
you push the button and it happens right away. That's scary. But with the so that's More really scary style where there's wait a minute 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 wait the fuck on is elon musk not trying to put what is that device the neural link into people's brains in order to make sure that they we can keep up with uh computers because he's worried about ai so he's trying to make us more into a biomechanical computer almost a cyborg so let's have neural link yeah, fuck you, Elon. You're not putting no goddamn thing into my head talking about it so I can get on the internet quicker. I'm okay, guy. I'm okay. I don't know about you. That's not for me, though. Because of shit like this. Because now I'm literally act giving someone access to my brain waves. And I said brain waves are unique to yourself. Same as your DNA, same as your fingerprints, same as your, your, your retina scan, stuff like that. Like, these are unique, distinguishable uh, bio uh, yeah, biomarkers. I'm good. I don't... <laughs> oh my God, it makes you think about putting AirPods in your ear, right? Putting the phone up to your ear? Oh, you know, I just freaked myself out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let me finish the video. Right. I freaked myself out. Diagnosis, good cop, bad cop techniques. Uh, we're talking months minimum. It's a long term conditioning process. And how long Once? can someone's mind be controlled? I've seen videos of people in these kind of hypnotic states. How long are they in those states? Well, they they come back in, in experimental literature that's published in normal journals. Yeah. You can have a post-hypnotic suggestion that's implanted that the person doesn't remember, and you can tap into it months at least later, if not years. So you're talking about flipping the switch. In the brainwashing literature, apparently people can be in a sleeper state indefinitely. But, of course, this is all secret and classified, sleeper so you state. can't actually document and prove Now, just go watch some TV shows. They do the same thing. are convinced that this could still be going on today. What other kind of experiments do you think the CIA could be doing today? <laughs> Anything and everything? <laughs> well, I would say uh, intelligence agencies around the world probably have Manchurian candidate sleepers everywhere, bro. today. And they're using a whole range of techniques to control and create them, which is uh, in terrorist organizations, there's going to be the religious doctrine part of it. Yeah. But it's the basic mind control programming technology that we've known about for decades. You control a person's life space, control the information flow, uh, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, convince them, convince them, convince them. Wait, wait, them. wait. So, so basically you talk about, I don't know, your Antifa groups, your radicalizations of our so-called left extremist groups, our so-called right extremist groups, you put them in the right environment. How about a university? Because they like to do these things at university. Talk about Harvard, Yale. You get them in the right environment. You program with the right thing. So you make sure they listen to only certain mainstream media outlets. And next thing they you know, you can influence their thoughts and patterns and behaviors. When I say it's not that hard, it's not that hard because they already done the groundwork for this and it's not just about united states government i said before it goes back to other countries uh, other governments throughout societies throughout the past modern so-called modern recorded history past five thousand or so years they're not inventing the will they're perfecting it because you don't have to reinvent the will it's all right the groundwork has already been laid out and they do this through drugs toxins and chemicals you don't think they're going to use i don't know music Food, entertainment, sports. You don't think they'll use celebrities? Because if it was me doing this shit, I would utilize every possible thing I can imagine. Because the more that I could, can kind of help control and dictate the outcome of the situation, I'm going to use that. It doesn't matter because the only thing that matters is my ultimate goal, which would be complete mind control or control of, over a certain subject. And I say subject because that's the words that they use. They don't say human beings. They say test subjects. Even though these are human beings. Then again, they don't give a fuck. Could have used it on a dolphin. Bro. Who thinks that? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, this is why I love movies. This is why I've always been a big movie person. And I'm able to reference these movies off the top of my head on the fly. Let me put electrodes and stuff into a dolphin's brain. Is that not Deep Blue Sea? When they did it, that's the so-called experiment with the shark, and they were trying to find a cure for cancer. <laughs> oh man, 
<laughs> is movie is, are movies uh, art imitating reality or are reality imitating art? Because what's going on here? Because uh, we know Hollywood ain't that good. These these writers ain't that great. I mean, they got so many plot holes. I don't think they can write their way out of a paper bag. Like a lot of shit doesn't even make sense, right? Some of their movies and stuff, but uh, it's all because they're taking real life stuff. Cause also think about it too. If you're in government, what are you gonna do? You want to make some extra money and stuff? Hey, I got a story to tell you. I can tell you this, but I can't tell you all of it because a lot of it's top secret classification. But I can give you this, and you fill in the rest of the blanks. That's your plot holes in your Hollywood storylines because their writing always sucks. Fuck me. It's so right in front of our face. Nobody's paying attention. Why is that though? Why is everybody so scared of this? Them, Why is it called a conspiracy them theory? Up with hypnosis, drugs, done by design. Which can be IV drugs or drugs by mouth. IV or so bottom mouth. It's a range of different techniques. It's not just one thing. Wow, yeah, it's a very unbelievable story, but uh, so fascinating. <laughs> unbelievable. That was Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute. And even though this is on RT America, which is not necessarily a mainstream publication, obviously it's Russia funded. And I like how uh, YouTube, Google decided to let me know that this is Russia funded in whole or part or by the Russian government. And then they give me a Wikipedia link. And once again, it's funny how Wikipedia in college, they tell you not to use it yet. Google says use that shit all the fucking time. Anytime you do a search on Google, even on DuckDuckGo, the first thing that pops up is Wikipedia. But in your college class, when you write your paper or in school or whatever, you use Wikipedia, everybody laughs at you. <laughs> Interesting, right? Interesting, right? And I like how they just casually gave him six minutes. Oh, man, that sounds very interesting. All that stuff. What the fuck? And we're going to talk about this for six minutes? We should probably be talking about this for, I don't know, a few days, maybe a week. Maybe we should get someone involved to do some investigation. Because the only congressional Senate hearing that you have or your Senate Intelligence Committee that has only happened that Joseph R. Biden Jr. was on was in 1977. And then that's it. You don't hear shit else about it. Sounds like me, uh, somebody, they realized during that uh, Senate committee was like, you know what? This sounds like actually a good idea. We should probably, uh, obviously end the program, but you know, give it a little while and then we'll ramp it back up, but we'll go under a different name and we'll see if we could try to take this into a better direction a little bit more discreetly. Because if you got caught with egg on your face, but no one really noticed, what do you do? You're just gonna wipe it off and you're gonna go back doing what you're doing. And you learn from your mistakes. Hey, I fucked up this time, but I'm good now. Nobody really caught on to me, so I know what to do next time. Why would the CIA stop their programs? Why would you stop? He even said after MK Ultra came, MK Search, and that said it all on the intelligence.senate.gov website too, as far as the report from the Senate uh, Senate, uh, Senate congressional hearing. Why stop? Why not keep going? There's no end in sight for these people because they don't operate the same like the rest of us. You want to talk about your 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 psychopaths or the power of population that will commit crime stuff? I'm sorry, don't look no further than the United States government. Uh, don't get mad at me. I'm just paying attention to the crimes that has been committed on behalf of their agencies and, and their governmental institutions since shit. Who knows how long this goes back? Definitely within my own recorded history and my own timeline of my own existence. Obviously back since 1955. <laughs> How are you going to have this shit, bro? How are you going to do this stuff, man? How are you going to do this stuff? And if I, Let's be honest, man. If I go out right now talk to my family and friends, you go out talk to your family and friends and you say, hey, uh, I don't think that mass shooting is real. I don't think it's about... A sex addiction or race or or whatever doctrine uh excuse me whatever narrative they're gonna pull out of their ass i don't think it's about that man it sounds like some nk ultra stuff like it sounds like these people are under mind control they're like no no these people are are just you know they're just crazy they just they just want to kill everybody you know there's just something just wrong with people some people just off i'm like ah, i don't i don't really buy that man it's a lot of shady things, though, man, because it seems like it's the same thing over and over. There's narratives and stuff that they're talking about. And people look at you like you're crazy. Why is that? It's funny how the most craziest thing you can do in society right now is think for yourself. And even the more absurd, crazy thing you could do is question the narrative. Question the official narrative, rather. 
Because when someone, a talking head comes on TV and you say, hey, you know what? I don't think I agree with what this guy is saying. That shit doesn't sound like it makes sense. Everybody looks at you like, what? You're crazy. I talked about before with my daughter. Uh, she was in class and she was like, hey, dad. Or she was telling me about her being in class. She's like, yeah, we was watching the moon land. Uh, not the moon landing, the, the Mars landing, the rover and stuff. And she was like, I'm sorry, this look fake. <laughs> she was like, I was like, man, you got it. I was like, kind of be careful what you're saying, but I mean, it's shit. And she was, uh, I'm like, you're right, bro. It does look fake. She's like, I know. I was like, it looks fake. She's like, she was like, don't get mad. <laughs> you know, that's my kid. My daughter's like, don't get mad at me. <laughs> I'm sorry if it looks fake. I was like, exactly, bro. <laughs> that's what I say. Don't get mad. Don't get mad because it looks fake. You should be questioning why this shit looks fake. The Mars, the Mars rover. Oh, yeah, we landed the rover on Mars. Uh, why does it look like Arizona with the red filter tint on your lens, bro? Don't get mad at me because it looks kind of odd. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Something doesn't make sense, man. Don't get mad at me when I see the Atlanta spa shooter and you tell me that he went off and killed these people within a distance of 30 miles apart. I don't know who drives from one place to another place to kill someone in a Hyundai, whatever, a South Korean made vehicle to go kill Asians. That's the kind of ironic shit. I have no problem with driving a, a, a South Korean made car, but I don't like Asians, so I'm going to go kill them. What? And then the, another narrative is he's a sex addict. Oh, so I'm so addicted to sex that I'm going to go kill these people because I don't want to be addicted to sex anymore because killing these people will make sure that I'm not addicted to sex because, because they contribute to my sexual addiction. What kind of backwards ass thinking is that? That doesn't make no sense. But then you'll say, oh, well, it's because he had mental health, issues. mental health issues. He's just already off. I have mental health issues. Do I seem a little off? Mental health issues is a lot of different things, bro. Once again, a broad, generic term. You're trying to paint a brush over something that, and try to apply it to everything. That's not how it works. You need to attack the core problem. You need to pay attention to the individual and figure out exactly what happened in this individual's life. This individual's experiences, this individual's philosophy, this individual's values, moral standards, ideologies to determine why this individual did this one thing. You cannot categorize everybody together because when you do, you do not pay attention to the actual situation, to the actual problem. You just throw a bunch of names and labels and excuses at it. That's dismissive. That's fucked up. That lets you know people don't actually care. And people just want to say something just to say something and go about their day. And that's fine, too. If you don't actually care, just say you don't fucking care. I respect anybody to be like, you know what? I don't really care what goes on. Uh, mass shooting, blah, blah, I don't care. Uh, politics, I don't care. There's nothing wrong with that. But at some point, it's going to knock on your door and then you're going to have no choice but to care. Because I don't care who you are. At some point, you're going to have to be involved in this. Trust me, I've been there before. I'm like, you know, I don't really care about politics. And this is even after I learned some shit. I was like, man, fuck the government. But I was like, whatever, there's nothing we can do. Because you get that sense of uh, powerless, powerlessness where you're like, fuck it, there's nothing I can do. But guess what? The best thing you can do is become knowledgeable. It's become informed. And then after that, the best thing you can do is find some way to share that knowledge with some other people. It doesn't have to be a bunch of people. You don't have to set up your own podcast, do your own YouTube channel, all that stuff. You don't have to do that. Respect one person, man. Talk to somebody. Spread the knowledge. And they don't have to believe you either. But you get that curiosity going. Because really what we're missing in America and around the world is just free thought. Just really thinking for ourselves. Just asking our questions. Curiosity. There's no curiosity anymore. We're not curious about anything. They let a goddamn fake ass machine on mars and stuff and nobody's really curious they tell us that they're looking for ancient microscopic life which i don't know when that term all of a sudden became a thing but whatever they're telling you that they found water on mars and stuff but yet the curiosity is no longer there because we've been deluded so much with so many lies we're just like well, fuck it man i don't really trust you anyway and then when you question it or you have some curiosity then if you ask a question or if you ask a question and people all of a sudden say oh it's stupid that's the whole thing, like flat earth. It'd be like, oh, you're stupid. You believe the earth is flat. Okay, but the fact that these people are willing to go against a popular narrative and think something differently, that's actually good. Because last time I checked, 
your ass ain't been in space either, so you don't know what the fuck it looks like yourself. <laughs> and I don't even think the earth is flat. <laughs> but you cannot dismiss the fact that you have no idea what size or shape the earth is because you never seen that bitch in real life, have you? You just live in it or on it. I can't even tell the termination exactly what it is. Once again, what is up? What is down? Because there is no up and down. Because when you're looking at the sky, you're not looking up. You're looking outward. <laughs> right? <laughs> these are the things we really should be focusing on in humanity, man. We, these are the things we should be focusing on. You're focusing on your own individual life, your own individual experience. You should be focusing on that. But at the same time, focusing on that spirituality, that, that universal connective between us as a species, one another, between, hell, my goddamn cat, an animal that you eat and consume and stuff. Like, we should be paying attention to that connectivity, that universal connectivity, what's going on. That curiosity, that wonder is what we should be searching for and talking about and discussing. But we're not. Why is that? And that's the real problem right there. Why are we not worried about this stuff? Distraction. We have a whole fake reality self around us we're a simulation within a simulation we're too busy worried about sports people in media celebrities oh i'm carter b and megan stallion rubbing their pussies together on stage and stuff oh wow that's cool mass shooting crisis at the border oh should we have a fence up or should we not have a fence up you got a fence around your house but god forget god forbid you put up a wall outside your country i'm sorry we're too busy copying all these divisive ideologies, divisive politics, divisive philosophies. But instead, we're not really hitting the core curiosity of our nature, trying to figure out what's going on here. What are we doing? How can we evolve as a species? We don't like each other. Why don't we like each other? In fact, do we even also need to dislike each other? Because through our disagreements, we can come together with a whole new different philosophy, a whole new different ideology. But we're too always being pitted against each other that we don't stop to really question and think anything what the fuck is going on around us man that's what it's all about guy that's what it's all about trying to figure out what's going on around us what's going on well a lot of people have been just i don't want to use the word dumbed down a lot of people have just been uh, tunnel vision you're worried about these little things and i get it because we've been there i've been there you get caught up in your own life and stuff, but you can, man. Take a few minutes out your day just to ponder some some wild ass shit. Like, hey, man, what about aliens, bro? Like I said, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, why is the sky, why is space dark? Even though it literally makes no sense for space to be dark. If it's bright as hell when I walk outside on a clear, uh, cloudy, free day, shouldn't space be bright as hell too? And then I actually took the time to look it up the other day. And I knew I told myself I didn't want to, and I shouldn't because I knew it was gonna fuck my head up. And yes, it fucked my head up because there is no answer for it. And the answers that they try to provide is bullshit. But that's something we're gonna dive into in another one of the topics. Maybe this week. What's today? Wednesday? Or thir no, today's Thursday. Shit. Never mind. <laughs> Friday. Uh nah. Now nah, I go with my gut feeling, so I know when to do the episode. And whenever I do the episode, that would be in part with Fate, destiny, whatever. I know when to do it. I'll go with my gut instinct. I don't think it'll be tomorrow, though. There's some stuff I still want to talk about as far as uh, politics and things going on in, in the world that I kind of, I didn't really touch on today. There's some other stuff. Of course, you got to stay on, I got to put my foot on the pedal and always stay on the, the throats uh, when they're talking about COVID-19 because that's such bullshit. But yeah, that is what it is. I don't know. Yeah. Tomorrow's topic, I, I'm sure I'm going to pull out my ass sometime between now and... <laughs> <laughs> between now and 11 a.m eastern standard time tomorrow but as always live stream underdog podcast monday through friday 11 a.m eastern standard time i really need to record an out outro that way i don't constantly fuck it up every episode uh follow me uh, uh on my twitter my social media my gab uh, my gab account you go to my website damianjackson22.com uh, top right hand corner you'll see a menu button or whatever it should say social media uh, links and stuff like that so you have the links to my podcast the audio video versions video version will be uploaded on youtube and odyssey uh podcast is on 
Spotify, Podbean, Apple, iHeartRadio, some other stuff. Go ahead and check me out there. Uh, message me on Twitter, message me on Gab, comment on stuff, whatever. I'm actually starting to open up and want to be more engaging with people. Surprise, surprise. I know, right? I'm such an asshole. And I like to be alone, but I don't know. I don't know. I've been I've been getting some good comments and positivity from stuff, so now I feel a little bit more open to engaging or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I want to come out of my shell or something. Maybe, maybe everybody's really starting to pay attention to this shit I've been talking about for years. So I'm starting to feel like, oh, okay, now we're all ready to talk about this shit. And I'm hoping that's the way we're going. But yeah, definitely uh, stop by a live stream. Hit me up in the chat. I probably won't talk directly while I'm doing the show, but I might try sneaking in a, a response or something like that, anything. Or I might say something while I'm recording, during the live stream, whatever. Definitely check me out. I'll upload the podcast, video, and audio version directly after the live stream. All that good shit. Just go love yourself. Be positive. Spread positivity. Spread love. All those good things in the world. Love each other. Be a good person. Have a great day. And I'll be back on tomorrow. So until next time.